Oi, oi. We are live. Happy flat day, guys. And wiggly flat firms, welcome to you on flat day night. Flat of British think tanks, famous flat day night chill out, full of positive vibes. And in this post, juicy information. It's going to be very juicy. The juice will overflow us in, in this. So you guys are full of the joys of spring. Really happy to see that in chat. Thank you all for being here. Jana and Manny and Alva Billy and Dean, who's got a new channel. So, welcome all. Who's wishing my son, who is was Dragon Metals, is Marianne with the dimples. We met in lovely Bournemouth, who is lovely and some being good. It's Martin. Yay, it is me. It is me. I'm here. I'm back and I'm back and I'm posting and I have a lot of juice for you for the next couple of posts. This one is what I thought I'd do, okay? Because we'll have a happy time. It's a thought I'd share some really interesting and useful information for you. Now, the cure for old age and um, preserving youth is something when you get older, you'll be thinking about quite a bit. <laughs> my, my old mother, Carol Litka used to say to me, she used to say, oh, old age, it don't come alone. It doesn't come alone. Well, this book by um, the Franciscan monk and occultist uh, Francis Bacon uh, states that a lot of, you get to the age of 40 and changes undergo in the human body where you're changing into, um, and, and he states this, that this uh, period through mind, and positivity basically if you're in the past and you're in trauma um and he, and he explains the emotions will bring on the old age and the look of old age it is only the lightness of your soul and the lightness of your heart and the ability not to give a fuck that will keep you youthful so it's really useful little um Tidbit in this book, little recipes for, you know, grain beards, maybe a bit of cornstarch in there, or maybe you're going a bit grey on the old barnet like myself. Well, there's a cure for that too. So we're going to have a look at them. Now, changes do happen. I've noticed these. Um, now, I was over always in my life hyperactive. I mean, screamingly so. I used to have to, like, literally keep myself down using substances just to keep myself like near like everybody else well now as i've got older i found that i haven't got the same energy levels as i did before which now it's just like everybody else <laughs> because i was always um in my life a lot fitter than everybody else around me and i was able to work a lot harder than everybody else around me i found that so the mind dictates how and there are keys, you know, I've been to some environments, some towns where I used, when I thought to myself, my God, these people are so beautiful, so youthful. Is there something in the water? Well, yes. And a specific diet. Now, um, it talks about purging, which is why I mentioned reset, reset of the mystics, because a personal reset of mind and body. OK, because body can pick up toxins now it also states in part of this book that there's a possibility that ancient civilizations and cultures demise was from a thing called troubled air where troubled air um, or infected air uh, was so bad during the time of the greeks that people couldn't even remember their own names or even the names of their children through forgetfulness maybe it's just like swamp gases or black mold flying around in the air, but whatever, um, it, it states that there was a massive um, Eastern die-off of the population caused through troubled air in antiquity. So um, is it possible that the air could be um, troubled through, because of the way consciousness is, troubled by the troubles of the collective? Because I can't help thinking, you know, that all of this shitstorm that is happening around us in the world and all of the countries going weird and all of the other stuff, you know, I always hope that, you know, that it would be better times. Maybe Robo AI God will release some time for us all so that we can all go about our lives doing the things that we want to do 
um, painting, poetry, walking, whatever. Okay, you know, what we consciously want to do with our lives instead of giving our time away and our energy away uh, to others. So maybe that is the case. It, it's seeming like if that might be down the road, then that would be a really fantastic thing, wouldn't it? So let's not just look at things as being like, oh, we're all fuck, we're all doomed, this gloom, because I don't see any evidence of that. I see evidence through the truth movement, the resistance itself, and everything else has been happening hope and that all is going to be well and will be well and it's down to us this trouble there is the collective's mind control trauma eking out into the ether with their scared of this and scared of that you know there's a whole plethora of youtubers out there you know some mainstreamers like uh, one guy i used to watch on british history channel neil oliver that's just jumped on my own podcast he's he's on he's on the camp of i'll just chuck fear the word fear i'm feared i'm scared i'm scared about this happening i'm scared about that happening and that's where they'd like to keep everyone you know so they don't think about their ordinary lives and getting on with their lives and you know making plans doing this breaking power and whatever it takes because their minds all fucked up and fudged up with bullshit that's told to them by others no i don't do that you see and another thing i don't do is put people on pedestals i haven't actually got any heroes as such i used to have Jimi hendrix before i found out he was tavistock institute but that is about it about it there's a few musical icons like keith moon and stuff but not a hero or an icon that i would base all my soul to before my own sovereignty and my own soul which is very precious to me as is this um journey that i'm sharing with you all of um a job in progress a work in progress of enlightenment and spiritual perfection and if you are on this road the road of the mystic it's going to come at you it's going to come at you thick and it's going to come at you fast and you've got to know it ain't going to be easy okay but the fruit is is you feel good your soul knows you're doing the right thing and your soul sings your soul sings to you because and it makes you just know that you're on the right track you know if you're not on the right track guys you know, you're on the, you're going the wrong way. Everything will go clusterfuck and nothing will work out. It'll all be broken in the minute you start because that's not the road you're supposed to be on. That is not you. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> I, I, you know, I think that, you know, this soul tribe that has founded one another, we're all vibrationally similar. Um, we're seeking the truth of what is this place, you know. For myself personally, you know, I ponder sitting here just thinking, my God, I can't believe they actually think that this house and where I am sitting now is on something that curves and is on a, on a ball that is spinning a vacuum of space. That just messes my head up. That just seems to me um, ten, 10 levels of insanity. It's just, where's the evidence? So anyway, but that's just me anyway. I, I need evidence on most things, all things. And what can we prove? Well, none of that. So globiness i mean <laughs> so god or the encoder or the creator um you, you see i i've never been an atheist all my life but then i've had some sort of like crisis with it all in the last year or two uh, mainly because of the ideas of simulation and and the rest coming out it's sort of loosen me from them ideals but um i think that essentially you know the whole thing with the angels um and i think that the thing with um you know us being having jesus like christ-like qualities is what we want to be isn't it you want to love our neighbor we don't want to be shitty people we want to be bad people so um i think that you know that aspect of that i wouldn't leave go off in myself um but not attached to any religion, just my personal thing, guys. You know, I've got my personal little religious, uh, spiritual setup daily, which I do, and I've been doing for many, many years. I do mental practices where um, I try to, which is not really easy, but um, I try to please my mind. I try to observe my thinking, observe my thoughts, see where they're coming from, see if they're coming from trauma am i fucking just bitter about that because i'm all twisted and fucked up because i was tortured when i was young um, and then i'll analyze it and be like well yeah 
yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's all about me then, isn't it? So maybe I just shouldn't be upset and maybe you're a bit or anything like that and just let go of those feelings. So I've been learning to do that, which is really, really been put me in good stead. So what miracle properties do they have in this book um, or, or secret properties um, that God has put into nature, which only certain people are allowed to know, not the masses, like the mystics. And they are hidden in plants. And they're hidden in animals and they're hidden in stones, some stones, um, also even coral um, in this book. Is, is, but that's calcite, so that's got medical properties as well. And um, it's a secret that only a few will know. So we're going to browse through that book. I've um, documented a few book points of interest, but you, the book itself from Francis Bacon is in the descriptions box. Take it away, read it yourself. It's, it's in Middle English, it's, it's a bit of a fudge fact to read, and it is really complicated because. There's a lot of different words, you know, the humours, if you've got to know what they are and the alchemical terms for all of these things. But it is super interesting. So we're going to look at that first. And then we're going to look at something that is mind blowing interesting. It's Switzerland. Switzerland. What's going on with Switzerland? We've all seen the Illuminati stuff and the weirdness on the statues in Bern, haven't we? We've talked about them before. But star thoughts are covering Switzerland yet. Um, they haven't really been involved in any wars. They had some weird treaty since the 1400s. We know they don't even have to pay taxes to any of the monarchy. They seem to be scot-free to do what the fuck they want. Yet, they feel the ability to build the biggest, most established airports you've ever seen in their life. I'm going to share these images with you. They are fantastic. They are our later lead van to heart atlases. And we're going to look at them. Um, I was going to bring up a Persian book that I found for a Bodleian library, but unfortunately, the Bodleian library has crashed today and will not be showing me any of that. But we're going to look at some fantastic pictures, images of Persia early. But I think the Pierre de Resistance today, the excellence today, is these, the earliest images of Naples, 1870s, showing Lahars, mud flows, um, obviously from Vesuvius, but still mud flows. 1870s Naples is mind blowing. If you study the Phoenician narrative on Flat Earth British, this book will blow your mind or some of this. I've got a dozen other things to share with you as well, but we'll look at the time aspect as well, okay? Uh, of what I can get into this post. What I don't finish in this, I'll post that in the rest of the week. Right, let's give you a few shouts and I'm going to chill the fuck up because I'm oh, hurrying away with myself. Their cheese is full of owls. Oh, that's quite prophetic. There's Dean, there's Jammy Vicious is in the house, there's my bro Mo, JRB, Holly's in the house. Hi, Holly, and lovely India. Ooh, Wilson is in the house. Hi, India. Truthy lady. Um, Mars, God of War. Ugh. Switzerland is the World Bank, you know? Well, it's a bit more than the banks. Yeah, they got all the money, and I guess in with all the Alps around them, it's a bit like bomb proof and stuff. It's so that big safe. But there's more going on with Zurich. You know, there's more going on with Geneva. You know, got the Geneva Convention. Apparently, all wars are dear to. What the fuck ever. So, why to wait, Wales? There's Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Good to see you. Lovely. Love to Lisa and Paul. We met them at my meet. I had a meet up last week, and uh, we had a a little get together and with Austin, who's the little kid, and Lisa and her old man Paul. We all had a hangout, a few people turned up, and uh, yeah, we had a good time later on. It was really enjoyable, a little get together. So it was very, quite memorable, I thought. Squirrel Sniper, the home of the Octagon. There's Marianne, his dimples, and there's Brian Evans, let's all send Brian Evans. Strange stuff with Switzerland. Yeah, well, I covered them in my first book saying about like, you know, the weirdness went on. I, I literally put a, a reset date of April the 1st, 1300s. Because basically, you know, the, <coughs> the Knights Templar, they go off to Jerusalem, they sack the shit out of it, they find something, um, and they bring it back to, uh, to, Jeru to, excuse me, to Switzerland. And then the Swiss state gets set up, and then they got all this power. So I think it's something that they found. Mel, Jazz Soldier, and Yosh. Yay! Hi, Mel. Miss you, miss you, Mel's my friend, Mel. Yo ho ho, and a bottle of rum. Should we have a sea shanty? 
think we should have a sea shanty. I'll tell some sea, sea tales later. So what we're going to do later on, images. So it'll be a trip down memory lane, okay? And it'll be images that are beautiful. The, some of the most mind-blowing mud floods and history images you'll see anywhere. You're going to wonder where the fuck I got these. Well, I tell you where, I search like fuck. But they're working, that's where. So they'll be all up there in the next couple of weeks. So that'll be good. So that's what we're going to do. Maglavelli. Happy flat day. Yeah, wiggly, squiggly flat firms. JT. Good to see you too. So are you feeling the love? The happy, kutchy vibes? I've got a coal fire over by there in front of me. I'm playing a little bit of Mozart, a little bit of Amadeus. It's like the punk rock of the 18th century. Hit me, Amadeus. Rock me, Amadeus, Rock Amadeus. So yeah, like a bit of Mozart, wrong Um uh, Mama Cat is in the house, Jeffrey. So yeah, I'll share a bit of this. Oh, do do be bon bonds from Fritz. This cool book, and I'll leave it up to you to uh, read for yourself. And I, as I said, it's in Middle English. So there's uh, Nora talking to Cheryl, who Cheryl Bailey, who they have yet to meet and chat with, but I'm sure that'll come one day. Sketches, no. no. Hollywood rules. Left for real. Uh, we are here again. So, yeah, so um, I, I'm definitely a, a purveyor of the cycle of reincarnation. I have always been um, self realized well, as, as early as I can remember. And reincarnation and um, karmic soul family you bump into along the way, and you definitely recognize. Um, Paul Owen, good to see you, Helen. Is a real thing to me and plus i had like a psychic um divine message in sitting in a seat in heathrow airport a uh, sort of non-audible voice from um god and it said we come back we come back and i, I said it out loud we come back and then the buzz i'm having now it was like that but times 10. i was blown the fucking way I was like, yeah. And then I just didn't have a dog after that. Uh, Satan is not Christ. Um, well, there's two sides to each coin, isn't there? No, there's a third kind. There's a third uh, side to a coin, isn't there? So uh, it's good and bad in everyone. It's just whatever you choose to do. Some of us are born evil. And you just want to bite, bite, bite people when they first come out. And, and as it states in this book, guys, you know, some people have trauma when they're in the womb um, and that will cause um, old age and illness right the way through the life when the baby comes out you know sort of pregnancy trauma as detrimental as says in this book um, it's just a miracle any of us fucking survive this place it's a miracle to me that i'm even here at all it's a miracle that i'm even able to talk and that i'm saying i don't even know how that even happened um, there's, I'm the only one of an old dying breed from Cardiff, from where I come from. All my gang. I'm the only one left. Right, maybe for the exceptional one. All gone. All dead. Friends, which is trippy and weird as well to think about. You know, that just, how the fuck is that? Why is that? And you get all in questions about that as well. But I'm on a truthy mission, so it must be for a greater goal. Spirit seven love. So I definitely think we come back. Susan. Okay, let's have a look at this magical book. So yeah, so uh, Francis Bacon thought of, you know, there's lots of narratives about him, the occultist and stuff. Um, side to, to do with necromancy, etc. But his book is a really helpful, kind, kind discourse. Of helpful information. He does state that some of this information came from uh, somebody who he's citing a lot in there. And um, because of that, he said it didn't go down well for the guy in the end of the because of the information. So for that, I think the information is, uh, is juicy. So let's do that. Let's do it, guys. Let's get into the juice. So make sure to share this out if you do. Getting your happy vibes, your double flat wiggly thumbs vibes. I said Roscoe Reese. 
Martin is a Welshman. Yeah, I'm from Cardiff, bro. Ely and Cardiff. Ely, boys, we are you. Whoa. I won't sing the rest. I don't think I'll get away with that on YouTube anymore. Plus, I'm still on a strike on this channel. It's like strict orders to not say anything about anything. So I'm not, okay? <clears throat> this is the new censored Martin, okay? New censored and cleansed, jug free Martin. Maybe. We can always sneak a few, sneak a few jugs in. So Errol, who's just read my books and was commenting earlier that he's reading the second, but he really enjoyed my third, which is a head fudge for everyone who reads it. Okay, good to see you. Thank God I didn't miss it. Indeed, let's thank the AI God. Praise AI RoboCard. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Okay, uh, what connection is Francis Bacon to John D? Uh, anyway, well, Francis Bacon was a Franciscan monk. John D worked for um, Elizabeth the I in Niamh's thought to have been the Shakespeare or is that bacon? Funnily enough, though, bacon uh, didn't eat bacon. Weird, that, isn't it? Anyway. So, Paul's in the house as well. Paul Grono, good to see you, Paul. And Michelle, and our neck of the words, and all the guys are in the house. Oh, I'm feeling the love. This is awesome. Dawson. Francis Baker uh, uh, is in Saint Germain Cathedral. Is this Star Flower? Thank you for the juice. So they were Franciscans in there, indeed. Okay, I know that cathedral. Okay, Sayop, Gypsy, good to see you. Welcome, welcome, everybody. And, oh, Adam Cook is my bro, is in the house. Swahit, good to see you, my friend. Adam Cook is in the house, safe as ours is, as always. And Maniage, bringing the love. Um, have you seen any videos, my lunch break on YouTube? Um, no, I've heard of it. I don't actually watch any YouTube because it's been weaponized. <laughs> Fuck through your head. Okay, I'll try. Makes sure you not really well if you do it as a content provider for like a decade. So, so I don't watch YouTube. I can't. Fuck through my head. So, and I don't, and I don't want that. Okay, it hurts me. So I just don't bother. There's a lot of it that's like just bad intent and it's all like you can see where it's geared and it's to like either make people fuck off on Nowheresville so they don't do the work on themselves and they don't sort itself out and they never get anywhere in life and grow old. And it states in this book, the period from when you start old age to decrepitness, that means sitting there shitting yourself, playing with poo and etc. right? That is a short period of time. It can happen for some like that, okay? Which I have witnessed and that's fucking true. So, going on that note, should we live like life like, you know, like party like it's 1999? Well, yeah. And we should always be party uh, like it's 1999. But no, it, we, we need to just think about the now, because that's all there ever is. Okay. And uh, seeking ways to do the right thing. Like in my case, that is true thing. I'm bringing the love and the vibration in weird, rocky times for everybody, which is something I do. And I did in the last couple of years, didn't I, when everyone went to shit in a handbag and we had a big party over here for two, two years solid. We didn't even address it. It was like not even a thing. It didn't even happen here. It was brilliant. It's like, what cold? We didn't even go there, did we? It was awesome. So, Corinne, good to see you. Happy Flatter Day, Flat Firms. Right, let's, let's show you this book. <laughs> okay. Um, pleasure getting, happiness giving. Um, I read, um, I'm not sure if I go with this philosophy, but I read a quote from the famous Welsh actor that played Hannibal Lecter, um, Anthony Hopkins. He's from Wales, yeah. Um, and he stated, um, I expect nothing uh, but accept everything. I thought, yeah, I can get that philosophy. I just don't expect anything. And it returns up. Would be fucking too, bro. But don't expect anything. So I think that was a good philosophy. And maybe he was talking about film roles because he had a few math ones, <laughs> except for Hannibal Lecter, with some fava beans, which is a Mandala effect. Apparently, he doesn't say a nice Chianti with some fava beans anymore. Apparently, that's changed. So I'm just saying. So you have to go watch it again, won't you? So which is the most 
pat that sticks in your mind in um, Silence of the Lambs. There's a few parts that are really bad, aren't they? Especially when he tucks his willy between his, his, his legs. That was pretty bad. Um, I think the worst part is Clarissa, isn't it? When that guy is like, give her a present. That was pretty bad, wasn't it? But they did make him swallow his tongue as a result. Just what psychos do. So anyway, Gary, no, I'm not in America. I can't go and I'm fucking spewing because it's all happening. Campbell's gone over to America. Land is just talking to him early on. Inviting him like I thought he was going to come to the UK, inviting him years like Campbell, come here, hang out with me, uh, hook up, and I'll come sort you out. Um, but I don't think he's going straight to Bosnia to the pyramid thing. So there's that. Um, yeah, I wish I could, but it's just non humanly possible this time. So there we go. But I love America, and my bones are aching, and all that warm American heat makes more pain less because. I can't concentrate when I'm in proper pain all the time. I'm struggling. So, so flat. Oh, cuckoo. It is so flat, it hurts. Okay. So, what's that? Is that? Ooh, ooh. So, what's that? What's that? Um, hey, Molly. I can't even say it. Just came from Archaics, your buddy's channel. Yeah, he's had a big thing on tonight. I'm away. I'm away. So, okay. Let's get into the juice. Lots in this. Buckling. All right, guys. It's going to be a lot of beautiful stuff. If I need to leave the uh, the video for any reason, I'll put some musical enjoyment on. But in the meantime, we're going to look at some, excuse me, bookages. So here it is. Awesome little book. Really enjoyed. I'm actually only how many pages in? I mean, 82 pages in. I only started it like last night, but it is fantastic, mindful, brilliant book. <laughs> but it's in Middle English, so it's like double S's and F X S's, etc. You know, you know how the score is with this W. So, the cure for old age. Now, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Never mind the elixir of life, just stopping old age in its tracks. Now, this book gives you absolutely fantastic ways of getting rid of wrinkles. Um, I know it's a bit tarty, and it is a bit tarty, but I'm drinking camp coffee that Adrienne bought, bought, brought to me because she seen me show camp coffee on um, a video, and she brought me camp coffee in Bournemouth. So thank you, Adrienne. I love it. Chicory and coffee essence. So 1970s. A taste you can trust. And like Rolos, which don't taste the same well, at all. And Cadbury's chocolate's all gone to poo. Anyway. So, um, let me just check my channel, see if everything's okay. I'm there, good. Wiggy five thumbs, that's what I wanted. So, also, um, the physical account of the tree of life that's later on in the book by the Franciscan friar Roger Bacon, who possibly doesn't eat it, but that's not really important right now. What is important is some of the content of this has been a mind blow. Um, by here, it talks about how to get rid of grey hairs. Now, this phlegmatic thing going on um, is caused by strange moisture in the air. Now, I live in Britain, which is like basically living on the bottom of um, a fish tank. Okay, Everything's covered in green algae um, and black mould and everything else. Um, and it fucking just really does your, does your body it. To live in Britain. That's why people like in Britain go to other hotter climates, but they're not allowed to do that no more. They're getting rid of that. The Spanish have said to like British people, yeah, yeah, you won't be running off down here anymore. But in Spanish, you won't be running off down here anymore, or whatever. So they still go to Thailand. Marijuana's legal there anyway. Where well, is in Spain? That's a matter. Anyway. So yeah, um, let's talk, let's have a look at some of these points in here. It's absolutely fantastic. So it does talk about the power of the mind, but it is all mind. I think that, you know, I'm not doing too bad for a man of my years. I'm still, you know, I'm, I am fucked up. I got an old injury that I did at sea when I nearly killed myself. I had a couple of really bad injuries. And um, it, it's just been plaguing me, man. And now it's just fucking terrible. So I've been dealing with that. Um, so that is like, because I was bashed into a ship, into a ship's, concrete floor from about 30 foot with a hose pipe throwing me so i didn't only fall off i was slapped on the floor 
I don't know if fuck me out. They were going to helicopter me off to a Portuguese hospital or seat me on the ship. So it was like, <laughs> seat me on the ship. But that took six weeks before I was uh, getting, before I was out. And my body, six weeks. So I was fucked. Up. So that was years ago. And it's just, anyway. So just over by you, okay, thoughts, okay, will keep you young. Okay. It's not like burns off of um, Simpsons drinking monkey brains or having sex with virgins. I don't think that keeps you youthful. Well, the seven might be true. I don't know. But through evil thoughts and anxious care of mind, ooh, ooh, what will happen to me later on down the road, even though it's not there yet? Where if sometimes men are hurt? For sickness and such, like evil accidents, dissolve and dry up natural moisture. So natural moisture in your joints, cerebral fluid and all of that. And let's be honest, old age really does look like dehydration, doesn't it? Like, you know, like we like tea bags, aren't we? We're just drying out. And it's just, that's where the cracks come and all of that. Some of it is from environmental conditions where people live. Um, you know, we don't get this so much in the Mediterranean, do you? Because they're a bit more chunkier in the face and they have lots of olive oil, olive oil to make their skin all stretchy. So they just stay young looking until they're really old. So, but I, I, I use rose water. Rose water was used by Nostradamus to apparently treat the Black Death and had loads of, loads of success with this. So, so yeah, and moisture, moisture is, is a fucker. So yeah, it gives you a lot of um, recipes. Let me just dip through some of this book for you. And let's hurry through actually, because there's so much to show you. Um, and this is linked below in the descriptions box, okay? Now it's a bit of a confusing thing here. It says by Roger Bacon, it says 1214 to 1294. Um, but yeah, it was published in between 1674 1694. Um, so I'm like super confused as why they don't know. <laughs> why they don't know is why I'm confused. Okay. So, excuse me. So, so <laughs> it talks about the longevity of life in biblical times. Now, in the year 1682, is in this book, astrologers celebrated a climatic crick. A grand conjunction, the highest planet, and divines after St. Peter's chronology to reckon that the subbiblical millenary, I don't know what that is, millenary, maybe a thousand years, or not far off without great reason. Um, I'm not sure what that actually means. But what it does say here is that the past lived for hundreds of years um in the case of noah um he lived up to 800 years and this is because they had the keys the keys to anointing and bathing and purging the body okay there's so many clues in this let me just get through to another another page uh, excuse me and um, evil there, I was wondering about this trouble there before I, I did a, a I, I shared a book about uh, what were thought to be plagues in the past, but were from atmospheric origins. <laughs> I mean, so this thing is, is not actually a religious text, but it talks of spiritual aspects of, you know, the effect on negativity to the soul you know which is i think is a big thing uh, but here it says about the greeks where the mortality raged among the grecians and those who did escape remained a forgetfulness for both their own names and their children's names because of vapors in the air hmm. maybe maybe there somebody poisoned the water supply with some psychedelics or something yeah trouble there in the midst of the part of others thick substance so this is like this gloopy air there's something in the ether which causes confusion of mind it causes troubles like across the board you know and this is what we're experiencing trouble there because of the collective all locked into you know we're scared they go on about politicians they go on about like you know we could be nuked nuclear war or 
you know, whatever, you know, it's just all bullshit anyway. So, yeah, the Plague of Athens, sure, talks about, like, basically poison air, like, you know, fever coming down on people, um, throat and ulcers, tongue could not speak, oh, God. But, yeah, so, basically, there's loads of clues in this book, guys. I'm going to give it to you to share in the descriptions box. Make sure to uh, have a good read of it. I'm only 84 pages in. I've got everything written down. If you have balls, you might be able to get a cure in this book. So, Lee, I know you tried in one of the other alchemical books that I, that I dug out. But this, that was Natural History, which is a fantastic book, by the way. Um, <clears throat> this one, it's taken, it takes a lot to absorb. Actually, you've got to read everything for like more more than once. So, so, so mind dictates age and youthfulness. It is all a state of mind. And I think that is definitely true, guys. If you, you know, I've always been like, um, try to be just you, youthful. Uh, just be like, because I'm a bit of a kid. You know, I do like childish shit. And I do. And I don't know why I do, but just I just do. And I, I don't feel like I'm you know, I've grown up properly. Although I have to be, look, I was matured very early on because I have to look after myself. So there is that, but I've kept child-like qualities is what I'm trying to say, yeah? which I think is definitely important. So there's loads of clues in that book. Read it yourself of stemming away old age because we don't want to be like old decrepit fuckers do we i don't want to be decrepit and old my mother she went from like 75 jetting off around the world the last time she on her that's what she did jet off around the world in the 70s and then um, the last time she came and she had like dementia kicking in and from 75 to 80 was a fucking disaster for her honest to god for a right poke in the eye for a woman as beautiful as that you know to be you know literally reduced to that which is a child, um, just the worst, honestly. For people to end up like that is the worst. And then other things as well. And I got my reasoning for what I think happened there, and, you know, but I can't talk about it. But um, she was on a ton of medication, is what I'm trying to say. So, um, yeah, I think we should keep our, our vibration right up. You know, maybe even, you know, can watch what you consume on the internet. The internet is, you know, a dodgy place to play, guys, you know. And you can literally fuck your head up on a watching a video. I've watched videos and literally like, oh, well, I'm not doing that anymore. And then two years later, I'm thinking, oh, why did I fucking do that? Because of a YouTube video. Right. No proof needed. No proof required. Just a hunch. Uh, which was fucking false, by the way. And I had this over and over with YouTube videos. I don't really watch them. I like um, animal videos. You know, I watch a lot of them. You know, like orphans, elephants, uh, baby goats, baby goats, um, and donkeys, little donkeys, stuff like that. And keep, keep the happy vibes going because, you know, the internet is awash with fear and negativity, isn't it? So anyway, we're moving on. We're going to look at Switzerland. Switzerland is high weirdness, okay, guys? Now, <laughs> apparently, they I'm going to not need to go before, like, 1798, really, because new subject, new subject. And now for something completely different, Swiss staff folks. So wars they got a load of staff arts in switzerland but they don't seem to be really involved in any significant war except for 1799 staff arts were well established apparently by then the, the french republic um, apparently french revolution sure revolutionary wars um in french invasion of switzerland allies none enemies none um, no information on said subject. So that's not even a good narrative, is it? There's no information on it. Um, so I can't see any, like, specific... A lot of, um, you know, the British were enemies in the War of Coalition here, as you can see. Um, but, like, they have not really had an attack or a battle or anything like that. They've had some cordial, the Treaty of Basel running since 1499, which is weird as hell. 
uh, because um, I think there's a link with what's happening with um, the World Economic Forum, and this is why. Um, because there was a war here, the only one I can find of, concluded in multiple Swiss victories. So even though there was battles, apparently the Swiss, and that would be at the borders, wouldn't it, um, had victories. Both Switzerland and the Swabian League were exhausted. So these were called the Schwabian Wars. Do we know anybody with a name like that who's a apparent world player? Just thought that was an interesting connection. Anyway, the interesting thing about this was um, the two sides would meet in Basin and agree to peace terms. So is the nature of the treaty. But they agreed, right, this. The treaty resolved the status quo of territory. Um, eight out of ten members of the League of Ten Jurisdictions were confirmed as normally subject to the Habsburgs. But their membership in the League and their alliance with Swiss Confederacy would remain in place. So they don't even have to, like, toll to the, to the royals. They're that important, the Habsburg dynasty. The Swiss were absolved from Austrian imperial taxes and imperial jurisdiction. So they didn't even have to pay taxes to the fucking Vatican or, or the Habsburg dynasty. They just left the fuck alone. To this day, World War I, World War II, completely left the fuck alone. They don't have to do anything. These are uh, lead van der atlases which show you the best images of Switzerland, uh, which I will share with you in the description box straight away after this video. But what you find with these, and they are the best images you can find anyway, these are engravings I've been showing for years. I've even had threats not to show these. Lead van der Haan atlases. These, he died in 1733. Some of them were released in 1733. This is a little bit later. But first thing I want to draw to your attention, excuse me, is all these Lead van der Haan city images are all from a bird's eye perspective and exactly the same height bird's eye perspective as American cities or European cities that I've shown before when I talked about bird's eye perspectives. Why is it that they're all from the same height? How is this even humanly possible that you can even conceive all of this juice going on down here from up in the air? So somebody said blue. Well, yeah, maybe. Um, you spend a lot of time up in a tethered balloon that you could get all of this down. Maybe, maybe. Or maybe the, the reason that they're all from this perspective is because that was the AI setting. Um, how long have these been? I've got copies of hundreds of them. I wrote them down uh, back in the day. And now they're all wiped off, Gallica. You can't get them. I can get them. I can bring them up, but nobody else can. And they just got rid of these. But early on, um, I just couldn't get my head around why there was so much detail. They were like photographs in an engraving. Um, and highly suspicious, you know, anything to do with Flemish art and Flemish maps. I'm not saying that they're fake. I'm saying that they showed the real history and they weren't meant to be Aucha. They showed Antiquatech. They showed us. In fact, this is where I got Antiquatech from, was these atlases, by doing this live, like this. It's thinking, well, what's with all these high spires? And, you know, so many of them in a close area and they're everywhere. And, you know, we just put two and two together, static electricity. And then static potential, the higher up you go, etc so yeah even in switzerland the houses have juicy little star forts check this out the star fort for a juicy little manor house but i don't think they're expecting any attacks on that chateau it's got a little moat so the idea is with star forts if you haven't been into or watching them is they are super futuristic technology based on fractal geometry we can't work out how they're even here, and they're definitely not attributed to the people who lived in them at these times. I found evidence, some evidence, that said they were put there by the Romans, who are the Phoenicians. So here we are on the River Rhine, and they built a lot of these palaces and these castles, like Colditz, 
up on hills like this to keep out of the way of the flood water when it does flood. Reisenberg, Reisenberg. So some sweet little German towns on the or Swiss border. So let's have a look at some staff footage. So I was interested in my last post, I found evidence for the whole of London being surrounded by a star fort. I've never seen that before. There's no star fort on this port. So there's not everywhere that is requiring a star fort. And let's have a look at some of the items that they, oh, excuse me, let me see what that says. Uh, to do with constants, let's have a look at, oh, translation there, excuse me. Marvellous stone from the quarry of whatever. In the diocese of Constance. Notice how they call them diocese, like diocese, or parish, when you go to parish. Okay, so we got, we're looking at fossils, which probably people had a lot of questions with in the past, don't you think? But check these out. This is Bern, capital of Switzerland. I'm sure we've seen many pictures of this on Flat Earth British. They got some crazy weird architecture in the streets of Bern, guys. All sorts of weird stuff going on. And they got the most amazing star fort. So, going on the maybe chance of a battle, which it doesn't state that they had, but they had an invasion of the French. And then later they had some involvement loosely with the Franco-Prussian War. They said that their involvement was political and is so brought in the German Republic, as we know today. So imagine you're attacking this star fort and these were actually put there, right, like they say, as bastions and as defensive places. Okay, so if the enemy is, um, and this, this should have a compass on these. Let me see which way we're going to. Oh, there you are. That's north. Okay. So the enemy is the um, French. So I'm guessing that's why this is on this side here, because the French are, are in the west. And we got the Germans in the east. So, but that would be easy. All you'd have to do is forge the river, come around here, and then you're in, aren't you? So that just makes no sense why they got the staff on one end, unless this bit is the weapon. <laughs> Pulse speed. So yeah, boom, incredible, incredible. So let's have a look. They got a lot of Phoenician stuff here. We've been examining stuff like this over the years that we've witnessed. You can see Mercury there, who's got, um, oh sure, looks like a, a bomb or something in his hand. It's not the Caduceus. So um, I want to show you images a little bit later. I want to throw a few ideas out there uh, concerning the horn of plenty because yeah all right it's an animal horn but all the fruit comes out of it it's like a replicator and um, i want to show you some really interesting images that have come with that um, which i which i'm going to present that are on bash reliefs in uh, in nepal uh, naples excuse me um so what's going on with this lady she's a bit of she's got a bit of the scales going on she's got hoofy woofies because she's a female pan or bacchus so i wonder what that is turns like a prayer wheel spins causes a sound the conical shell definitely causes a sound <clears throat> okay let's flip through <laughs> so if i'm going too quick do not despair i'm going to be sharing these with you this is a map of aquifers that earns of the mountain. Let's just move on. Okay. But these aerial views, I don't know, even know how they're doing this. How are they doing this? Look at the cathedral there and all. But we're not looking at, uh, that's Lausanne, and we're not looking at any star for, for that. But beautiful, massive, massive cathedrals they have in Europe. Some of them are just mind blowing of scale when you look up at them. You know, so also for some of the um, British Gothic cathedrals. So I'll share these two. These are both for Switzerland. This one is because shows bits of basil, which have changed 
uh, in time, which we'll see. But both sides of the river, massive staff or complexes, which is supposed to be just a stop like, you know, cannonballs, etc. But it will, I'll show you later on an image later on in images of the day of a staff fort that was built in India by a Raj, uh, late 1700s, and it's made out of granite. So if that was the reality, a cannonball wouldn't just ping off it, you know. So, yeah, you can see there's a round retender here, um, a mix of staff fort, which is a bit different, round and staff fort. So no staff fort on the river. But yeah, all staff fort, as we know, are, are on rivers. Most of them are near water courses. This seems to be a large part of the technology, um, which makes perfect sense because all that data in the water, all that energy, all those standing waves, of course they would use it. So yeah, they, they, they were using different uh, technologies in the past and they're not telling us about guys using pollution technologies with far superior to technologies of today. And you needed um, installations like star forts. You know, these things go deep. They're connected to one another. These could be, like I've presented in the past, you know, bunkers. Some people have said mining. I'm not seeing that. I am seeing that they could be lived in and could be protective of waves because of their stealth bomber technology would uh, split, rebound the wave. So there could be that. So there's beautiful on the river. Not much star footage going on. And that is on the Rhine as well. Look at this. Imagine walking around Germany all days, guys. Look at this. So it's in the center of the of the town, as you can see, there's buildings, and they've just got like this really large wooded area. Wouldn't that be cool? All mad big trees look, and everyone's just standing in the trees. They got water, real good water, and they're all just like in the trees, man, getting the energy, the organ energy. They're getting all that energy out of them big, lovely trees. Oh, they should be doing that everywhere. That's what I liked about Texas. You know, in the in the, um, probably got this other places in America, but I noticed the interstate, especially like Interstate Forty Five, in the middle, they have grass. With like big massive trees all the way down the middle, I thought, oh, that's a lovely little touch. And they have a roads over there, so I'm going to worry about them hurdling towards you. But yeah, that's what we should have in the centre of cities, big woodland areas to go and hang out in. Look how happy they all are, guys. Dogs running around. A little bit of antique with tech going on, a bit of Phoenicia there, look. I hope he's not peeing in there. Never, never pee in, never pee in the well or the water supply. Okay, that's like even in Sung Su, they don't don't put the dead in the water supply. Don't put them down the well. Find a dry well to hide the dead, which is good advice in battle. So, let's have a bit of music, can't we? Okay, let's check if I'm actually here at all. I am here, like I like, feel feel myself. Yeah, I'm here. I mean, um. Oh, let's have a look at that. So I trust you're having a good flat day night. We're going to be having some good laughs later on with my images of the day. We're going to reminisce um, old times. I'm going to teach you, some of you younger viewers, a thing or two about us old fuckers and the way we used to do things in the past. You may be shocked. So, oh, you actually did that. Yeah, man, we used to stand at telephone boxes, man, and queue to make a phone call. Yeah, it's the only way we could communicate, man. Yeah, and then like the, the thing called the beeps would go beep, 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 and then you'd be checking your pockets for another 2p or another 10p, just shove them in there. Well, they look like they had a bit of mud going on. Yeah, look, and then we had the speaking clock, and you'd ring the speaking clock. And then they tell you the time. They changed it from a dude to a chick. They used to have a, a posh English dude. They go, but the time is 1845. And then they changed it to a chick. And then it was, the time by accurist is 40, 45. Check this out. So again, from this higher uh, position, nice stand. 
sort of stuff up, cancellations, tenders, like that to the business, but it's not staff up. But they don't really need them, do they? Because there's no one going to fucking attack them ever, apparently. Have a look at this one. Oh, look at that. It's called the Hedgehog one, that is. In Cellure. Don't know that. But wow. You know, it just don't match. You get all, like, wooden, like, sort of medieval houses with, you know, poor sewerage and poor building quality. Except for the Greco-Romano buildings that are hanging out all over the world, though. <clears throat> We're definitely older. And everywhere's got them. Your civic civic centers, your your state courthouses, your state seat halls, what they call state building. They're all old world. So yeah, what they got up on there? They got a big bear shield on there. And the bear usually represents uh, Russia, but not in this case. Seen two bears in the Czech Republic. They were lovely. Apparently they've been in the castle like 500 years. Not them two, but their descendants. And um, they were really happy. They were sat there eating a big bunch of apples and bananas and stuff. They looked really happy. So what you do get outside of every, every Lead Van der Haar image is the trees are always broken outside. It's just like a little nod from the artist letting you know that a reset had previously taken place. Every single one of them, you will see it. But this is quite some time after, apparently, because there's grass and trees grown back. And there's a load of these. The Cantons. I wonder why their name's Cantons, like the city in China. I don't think there's any connection or whatever, but the Cantons. And a load of frisbees. A frisbee with a swastika. They got that in early. Okay. We'll look at swastikas early later on in this post. They've been found everywhere in the world. And they're sweet fuck all to do with fascism. They just hijacked it. You can't, you can't. Sort of thing going on. But really, it's... Uh, what? Well, four angels, double Taurus. I think the black sun is probably there, but not visible. Underneath the inertia plane, shooting its light up through the North Pole hole and projecting our sun and the second sun, which is now the moon, because the sun was a, the moon was our sun. We got two suns ready to shine just for you, is what I think. So, what happened to the moon? Won't run out of power, maybe. Maybe it's a battery change. Maybe it just gets to a point and it illuminates again. <laughs> Who even knows? <clears throat> but it's fun to think about anyway, isn't it? Because let's be honest, we don't know what this fucking place is. So let me move on. All right, let's have a look at that juicy image. Well, it's always from the same perspective, isn't it? Rapersville. Rapersville. Well, it's definitely Stanfordage. But yeah, they've got lovely trees. It's all green and pleasant at this period. And they seem to have got a lot of aquifers. One thing that I thought was super interesting was this, and I posted it years ago, but wondering what it was doing there, because this is like 1700s, and then you've got like a modern... Um, building that looks like that it's like well that's super out of place 1700s isn't it <coughs> so um i i thought it was like a heavy water plant <laughs> like they had in uh, norway during world war ii where they're producing deuterium for whatever nefarious reasons but i'm sure there's more going on with deuterium than just you know heavy water than just project production of nuclear weapons um there's infinite things that can be done with water so um i'll show you oh i never uploaded it water in stasis you can buy these fans that put a sound in it you get some at your pattern through the water they're beautiful i'll show you my next so anyway yeah that's up in the alps and there's water coming into it so i'm guessing it's a water treatment plant yes 
So is an app like one, two, three, four, five, six story modern looking building for 1700s, don't you think? Let's find out what it is. Um, the view of bathhouses. So they're bringing the water in and there's people bathing in there. But in that book, it states on page, oh, I think it's 27, bathing and anointing. Okay, so anointing is rubbing oil on yourself. Now, there's plenty of, like, elixir, you know, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Don't worry about the myrrh next time. I'll be like, no, give me that myrrh, yeah? Because that stuff, like, ointment, ointment, I bet you haven't heard that word for a long time. You rub it in, and oil goes straight through your skin, okay? It really does. Like, you know, water, if you put it on there, you get little beads of water, because, you know, if you've got oil on your skin, it makes you water resistant. But if you put oil on there, you know, apparently the Romans used to, like, you do it with olive oil. They put olive oil on themselves, and then they just scrape it off like that with a stick uh, to get all of the toxins and everything out of their skin. So, yeah, anointing, and, like, they did it all the time with Jesus. Like, what was it? Mary was down on his feet, anointing him all the time. Did you see that in the Jesus Christ Superstar? And um, other anointings going on in history as well. So, yeah, get the oil. What oil is a good one? This is... Okay, we're moving on. So I thought that was super interesting, especially for like its time of like 1700. It's like, what's the block of flats doing there? Or bathhouses. So I bet that was nice. See, they had nothing else to do except for go to the baths, lounge around, bathing and anointing and just feeling fucking great yeah and i'll have to go off and do stupid shit all day that they don't want to do be like killing yourself killing yourself to live as black sabbath once stated which is very true that's what most people do <clears throat> i'm surprised anyone survives this place it's just craziness so that's geneva look at the star forts on there saint gavis but these look like pistons you get on engines, don't they? I least you just go like, doo -doo 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 -doo. get a bit of the mortal engines vibe when I see a star fort now, thinking like I see it active in my head. But who even knows? I've seen a lot of evidence of, um, tar, what's that? Port of La Tar, Tart Taste. Tartus. Interesting. Um, a lot of evidence of, um, hydraulics and water equipment with star forts, shutters, levers, you know, things like that to let water in and out of certain areas. So look at that for a star fort. Whoa, that's Geneva's. So you must not give me Chinese burns. This is against the Geneva Convention. July, July, what month were you born? I was born in October. July, July. I don't think they were even good torturers, the SS. I'm not, you know, it was not like a, a torture-ometer in secret agencies or whatever they were. Um, but I just don't know. What did they do? What did they do? They used to, like, pull out your thumbnails. That's pretty shit. Thumb screws, that's pretty bad. Um, nails and, yeah. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. Yes, the SS are pretty bad, bad torture things. But the people who went to cold it said they were all right after. Well, they didn't moan too much, but, you know, I wouldn't want to go through the SS interrogation. You must only give them your name number and serial number. See? You could just start talking a load of bollocks to them. Fuck their heads up. They're like, get him out. He won't shut the fuck up already. Like that. Just they'll do their heads in. I could do, do their heads in. Easy. Just tell them. See, broken tree outside, same elevation. So, yeah, it's funny old times, but they won the war anyway, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. So who's in control? The Phoenicians, isn't it? But they're not here anymore, so it must be somebody else doing it for them. <clears throat> so who would that be? The Persians? The Persian Third Reich. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? What about the Jewish Third Reich? That would be weird, wouldn't it? 
Look, nothing, anything's on the table in this place. This place is 10 types of nuts. Anything that you think is happening is not happening. I can assure you of that. So, yeah, that could be actually a reality now, I'd say. It. Yeah, yeah, I think that could be true. Now I've said it. it. It's just out there in the ether now. Sunday, I'd say, yeah, maybe I'm the first in history. Maybe, don't know. Anyway. I share that with you in the descriptions box. More, more um, thoughts that just pour out of my Brian a bit later on. So these are phyloscopes. Now I'm just going to show you before I um, show you what it is. It's of Westminster Bridge in 1896. It's a bit of a rusty old bit of film, but it's from the 28th of March, uh, 1943. It was released, but it says public domain. This is for you, AI YouTube. Okay, let's have a little look at London 100 years ago. Okay, Westminster Bridge. Okay, you ready? This is in a flick book, like that. Like you can make flick pages. I'll do one now for you. Like that. I'm gonna make one now for you. I'm gonna make a cartoon for you. It won't be rude. Well, it might be rude. I always do rude cartoons. I can't see any bridge happening here. So yeah, just took photographs, connected them all up together, and then you get a little uh, little book. It's cute, but there's a if I'll give you the link because it gives you loads more here. Look, you can get like a battleship um, in 1899 and all different little films. So some moves you through. Anyway, I'm going to juice juicage here right now. I'll flat with British. Okay. What we got here is, I always find it weird, I used to find it weird years ago, when I used to think Pompeii and Herculaneum were in real events, um, but Hollywood definitely infused that narrative, didn't it? Um, which I don't think was the case now, because there's like 12 million people living around the Bay of Naples area in total, all, all the way around there. And uh, the people of Naples, even here in 1870, yeah, they're having lahars, they're having mud floods, um, and they don't seem to give a shit about like Vesuvius popping its top and covering them all in boiling up pyroclastic flow or lava or anything. So um, they, they've been living there like, you know, for some time now, and they're not really that bothered about it all. So we'll have a look at these. These are very juicy pictures. 515 of you watching, welcome to Flat Earth British on a Saturday, which is a flat day in wonderful old blighty which is great britain so yeah the these images of some of the best i've come across in some time and there's loads of reasons why so let me just turn the volume down on that because that's me talking uh, this is a really interesting castle we're going to see a little bit later on um but that thing up there on the top of the hill the romanesque villa thing has to keep you up out of the way of any water because it is on the coast. There it is, and the volcano. It's a large obelisk there, right on the uh, or oh, lighthouse. And there's that castle there, which is a really unusual, big, bulky thing, which has star fort attributions to it as well. And it's a big port. There's another big port there. And it's all of these people in the Bay of Naples. All of this now is obviously all of this is populated right the way around the whole thing. OK, so who is the influence here if this is in Italy? Uh, looks a bit like St. Peter's Basilica. Part of it, but this domed thing has got a Moorish feel to it, wouldn't you say? But not the Greco Romano bit. I always think these were the technology, you know, these they look like you know, these pillars remind me of harp strings or strings on a piano. And these two, and I just wonder if they reverberate and cause specific sounds or resonance, especially if they're like you know marble so what we got here it's got my name martin there st martin yeah he's got my name marticus von 
Litka I am today. One of the Von Trapp family, or the one of the Von Shetcher Trapp family. The hills are alive with a shut the fuck up. It's eight o'clock in the morning. Sorry, one, innit? Fucking Julie Andrews running around singing in the morning. First it's the fucking cockadoodle do, then it's Julie bleeding Andrews. I ask you. So these are really interesting statues. I wonder why you got all that tech around them. Maybe because they get Ram Raiders. But somebody brought a window tax the other day. Okay, these windows blocked up. You know, there's half a mud flood window there. Saying, um, well, there was there was a window tax. Yeah, we've looked into that. That was apparently released in Britain, but I was it in Italy and Rome, ancient Rome? Did they have a window tax? Because there's bricked up windows everywhere in in Christendom, and we yet to know why. And mud flood. A mud flood happened everywhere, all of the time. The fronts of the buildings and the backs of the buildings are completely flooded. All around the buildings, not just on the fronts. They've got shops here in Ely, and there are only two levels at the front, but you get on the back and they go like three levels deep. So the front was mud flooded, and they've dug it out the back. Because the floods are at the back. It's everywhere. So I wonder what that is. Oh, it's a guard post thing. You know, like a um, sentry tent thing. So they can watch their city hall official looking building. And there's no, there's only like a couple of guards around. There's not actually any population going on here, is there as such? What's going on with this? So some nice gardens up there. I mean, that'd be really attractive to sit up in. Huge big windows boarded up. Huge door boarded up. Windows boarded up. And all these really low windows down here. Cannonballs. Cannons and cannonballs. It's the armory. For Naples. Well, they're never going to use them, are they? Well, they're not. Well, they might use them for a week or two, and then I just decide who's winning the battle and join them. So, um, this is inside. Look at this for opulence and magnificence. I dare any architect in the modern world to pull this off. Okay, not even them flash flash fuckers in Dubai can pull this off. It's all flashy, tarty, plasticky crap from China. Okay, you can't pull this off in the modern day. Look at it. It's ten types of what? And these are definitely electric. I didn't have nobody going around starting them off with a bloody stick and a candle. I can show you with that. So there's that main building. I'm guessing it's a city hall. There's a really unusual dome on that. I don't know what to think of that. Looks Moorish. And wow, look at the size of this. Big doors, huge clock tower, quarter past 11 in the morning. And some of those statues that you get on St. Peter's Basilica. Same sort of thing going on. Who's that there? Well, oh, this is Naples. So I don't think it's Christopher Columbus. What's he got there? And he's got a he's got a twisted column. Oh, I went to Genoa where um, Christopher Columbus was from. I couldn't even believe it. A guy came up to meet me the ship in a little boat and he started shouting Christopher Columbus, Christopher Columbus. I was like what the fuck ever, get over it. And um, everyone was going on about it. Like it was like a thing. They even had a fucking gates and statue. I was like, yeah, don't worry. I don't think any of that really happened. Look at their gardens. Let's time travel and go back in time, walk into those beautiful gardens. I bet they smell like heaven. And here's some of the statues. We've looked at this one before more than once, haven't we, guys? Jesus Christ, superstar, who do you think you really are? So, yeah, this is uh, AI. That's a statue. It's not new to your sexual content. This is art. Look at that inside the basilica. So, yeah, I was thinking the other night, laying there, I was thinking, God, what is the impact of me telling everybody the churches were not originally places of worship, but really, 
you know, machines of a type. Um, and that they came and, you know, just like inserted themselves in these buildings and said like, yeah, that great feeling you're feeling. Yeah, that's not the technology we're harnessing at all. That's gone. So here's the fisherman. We've seen it a million times, but it is a mind mangle to think that it's pursued out of one stone, especially including the, the ropes. So the fisherman, he's been caught in the, he's been caught in the, uh, in the net. And the Cherubinuski's there, the little angel, but again, always, I tell you, you're gonna see this axe literally everywhere. You look at the images of the last supper, it's got red, curtains like you get on on a stage show any narrative these are all narratives these are all like movies like stage shows the whole thing is and all of this like bullshit to support their narratives even when they're really suspect it's like i don't think any of that's going on and you look for proof and it doesn't exist it's a giant beautiful wooden door wow Somebody went to the effort to like literally carve all this up by hand and it's so Phoenician. It's got all of the, excuse me, I can't stand doing that, the mermaids. What the fuck is that? Mermaids. There. <clears throat> and Phoenicians again, and two opposing Tauruses, the old thing that we see, but the effort in that. She mangles your head. So here's a couple of monkeys, or one, and a guy doing a picture of whatever that thing is there. So look at it. Well, it's a big wooden box holding a reliquy. I wonder what reliquy it is. The bollocks of St. Peter. So this is it. I'm not saying that that is a reliquy. I'm just saying that what you want to So interesting bas relief for loads of reasons this i've been looking at this for quite some time so they've got the lion and the unicorn as a one as a one being well as that is either a philosophy or a political ideology or a royal household maybe with the lion and the unicorn because it's all over britain but then you've got this chain on the back of it and on the chain you've got this object and out of the back of the object is strewn and i'll show you in a later image or vegetation similar to what you get from the horn of plenty the horn of plenty is like a nowel horn or something like along those lines and it's twisted and then you get like apparently the phoenicians turn up and there's all of the stuff after reset all of these new plants all of these new foods new sciences new stuff you got this angel which has got this and it's all like bursting forth from it i'm like is is this like a replicating technology and one other thing you'll see with phoenicians even the older ones is they're youthful you don't see them crusty and old in fact i'm looking they're always useful even muscular when they're old because they got the they know the key to you know switching it off old age i mean there's this thing in the middle with the beads on and his foot seems to have to touch it See, I think it's an analogy for technology we, you'll, you'll understand. Look at the size of that door, guys. Why? And the bars on the windows as well. Why? Just crazy. And then bollards there. They're in like... Uh, I don't know how many sides are on them. But unusual bollards. Oh, I don't know what you call them in America. Or whatever. <clears throat> they're called bollards, aren't they? That's what they're called. I know it sounds like bollocks, but the bollards. So they have a lot of these. Now, I, there's another thing I was trying to imagine. What I do is I just stare at a thing and I see what comes of it. I stare at a picture and see what comes of it for a while. <laughs> and I was trying to imagine why they did this and why it's all overall chemical images. And what I mean is putting building on top of building on top of building in tears and ending off with the church at the top. And they do it on skyscrapers and Phoenician buildings. And then I just thought, well, this is the way that the Phoenician world looked. The world looked like this architecture, and they just brought it here. Seen in so many images. So these are looking medieval. He's got the serpent. 
might be an octopus tentacle, though. Tentacle, excuse me, or am. And the Phoenicians holding the laurel leaf, angel, winged angels. But yeah, damn sight, a lot of work gone into that bit of uh, architecture. What is it? We get lots of things like that. So this is that bas relief again, which is showing you vegetation and stuff. We should have more of that relief. It's so cluey. Uh, it's just the port. Let's move on. There. So you can see that um, interesting band in here as well. I like that. It's like, um, like a crescent moon or something there. Which I've seen before that image. Get on the top of buildings, which looks Muslim, but it's not because it's Phoenician. So this uh, line of unicorn, he's got this thing hooked to him, a couple of ribbons off it, and then all of this vegetation strews forth. And then a skull, human skull, and then a, a, something sprouting life out of, a, out of a human skull. So it's pretty hard to interpret, but I can guarantee you that's a code. And that means something to them when they were putting it on there. Screams of the Phoenician takeover to me. So that's a really big tower with Antiqua Tech. Let's have a look. Let's do another church, which is nothing like it. Completely different stone, different time. Even the building next door, nothing like it. And it looks like it might be maybe blue landing platform, but I don't think so because of all these blowholes in it. And Antigua Tech coming off there. You know what the writing's all about on the back of the paper. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, there's that building again with all these really cool bollards outside. So, a little mag up on the end. What's that? That's the road coming down here. So this is under the road, these buildings. Well, you see that quite a bit, don't you? There's a bell up there, just the one bell. Let's have a look at that. Huh. Cute. Just one little bell for such a big building. And look at that. Blew my head when I seen that image first time. Can you imagine that with all them gardens in the middle of the old world? all of this water and this technology and believe you me that is structured water guys that is going to energize you just being near it but again with all of the lions and mermaids and phoenicians for sure but still beautiful look at that building here in the background this one it's got an arch with a window two smaller windows and then it's blocked off and two of these windows like clothes you know an iron shape with two holes in it. Can you see that there? Super unusual. I haven't seen anything quite like that. These ones. There's some grilling on there as well. But that arch, poof, that looks like it's mostly missing. It's buried. And the size of them doors as well. So it had to be giant here at some stage. Not too much on the population. Nice big modern looking apartment block there. And there's a load of stone there. So some red flood windows there on the back or on the side. Can't imagine any reasoning why they would make a new building and put them in unless it's just to match what is already there. Look. Big chunky blocks at the bottom, all of the low windows, half windows, probably the same size as these, or even these. God, a fountain is out of this world. So I'm guessing there's gardens at the top of that. Look at that corner bank. Wow, just stunning. All built on these little hands and carriages, bringing all these materials. It's quite dirty too, isn't it? Upper tiers, like you're going all of these buildings for flood prevention, so you can get off on a boat. And Imperial Eagle. And there appears to be gardens on the top, which would be a really nice touch. And I can't tell you what the scaffolding is. Outside of it, it's just scaffolding. Um, more Cherubinuski and more. 
fast reliefs. Can't make anything of that though. And look at that for a portal for a door. They got an artwork over it. I don't know if that stands time. Cherubinuski's axes. Cherubinuski's are cherubins, by the way. The cherubins. Look at the detail in that arch. My God, that is stunning, really. It's your world, isn't it? Jeez, that is just beautiful. And the size of the door has to be big enough to allow the giants that are roaming around the place of the in the past in these times that's why all these doors and these arches are really big look at the size of this thing so we can make up anything out on these reliefs because no it's a shame so many clues in reliefs as to their nature it all seems to be about gaining land commerce funnily enough and giving people stuff or selling people stuff because it's all it's all about, wasn't it? It's like an old-fashioned version of cultural Marxism. So here we have a load of praying angels and a Lady Liberty there. There's loads of different personifications. Some say Satan, some say Apollo, some say Mithra. There's under loads of different names for this personification. But there she is, she's got Lady Liberty's hat on, same as Statue of Liberty, with them spikes sticking out of the helmet. So is this a griffin? It's all his ribs, it's this skinny griffin. I think it's a griffin. And he has his foot, or his hoof, on that thing that that guy had to touch. I think water's dripping out, maybe it's a button. The griffin can use a water dispenser. Okay, I've never seen anything like that. Pillars held up by lions. That was amazing. It's really dirty, don't they? These pillars, <clears throat> especially indoors. If it is indoors, no, it's outdoors. It looks to be a person on a wheel. So, um, and another person being chopped up there. So it appears to be. Um, torture and here uh, somebody being boiled and i don't know what's happening to that person so yeah that's a nice friendly little bash relief yeah boiling someone wow that's totally gnarly guys yikes what's going on in church don't take me to church daddy we gotta go to church we gotta praise the lord but the eaters, they don't do that anymore. They do sacrifice. No, they don't. But they do. See, I think, I was discussing with my son the other day, actually, that we think some people should never go on holiday. No, never. Especially people who don't embrace culture very well, you know, complain about everything, being not home. That is something. So if you go on holiday, uh, some people, I would advise you not to. These are the things that could happen to you, okay? So, some people should never go on holiday, and this is the reasons why. One, you may come back with a wife. Two, you get ripped off and lose every fucking thing. Number three, get kidnapped and possibly lose your organs. Could happen. Number four, get eaten. Get eaten. And um, I'm working on the rest, but you know, this is the reasons why you should never go on holiday anywhere. Some people, so this um, got a wobbly column in the middle of their little courtyard, grassy thing. These monks, and he is oh, I got a banging headache, and he's looking at these skulls, maybe of saints, I don't know, but he's like pointing. Right, let's follow his finger. Maybe he's just ignoring him. He's like, oh, okay, I wonder if he can see me. Yeah, I can see you. You're standing right there. Uh, the story of these skulls. Oh, I don't know. There's the wider picture. Okay. Well, that looks really sinister. I don't even know what's going on. 
So there's a load of mugs, and they've got a little death thing going on. Oh, God, look at a fucking rat singer there. He's definitely going to eat you. Oh, he's got binoculars. Look at the other one. Oh, my God, he looks like a devil. He looks like a witch, but a really evil one. Who could destroy him? Like the green one in The Wizard of Oz. So let's have a look at him. So, yeah. That is really weird. So, sorry, it's religion, so I couldn't possibly know the context. It's to do with death. It's a death cult. Right, water features. Let's have a look. But knock yourself out. Not literally. Because that would be not good. Right. They've got blow holes in the top here, a clock. There's a bit of plaster come off. A weird lower level. With like a weird window in and a weird window there. And then the big tiered lower level. And then you've got this Antiquatech with the dude looks like an Indian, but it can be because it's in Naples. And another little water feature here with also a little bit of Antiquatech over. And that's a well. There's some great there, you can see. Maybe your whole thing under there is aquifer. There's writing on there. And another grate there. Mm. So there's a pillar in the middle of there with a cross on it. But crosses could be resonators. Wow, that's a crazy forecourt there. So, yeah, here's rush hour in, uh, in downtown Naples. Not much going on, is there? Look at that for a portal entrance a gate. Again, building on top of building, on top of building. They always do this. But that is wrong. Not the Phoenicians, I should say. Seashells, seashells. She sells seashells on the seashore. Two Phoenicians with Horn of Plenty, which they bring with them. With um, plants that I've yet, like, they're as hard to find out what they are as like voyage manuscript plants. I think the Phoenicians definitely made the voyage manuscript because of the watery theme and all of the strange nude people in water and stuff. I think the voyage manuscript is for sure made by the Phoenicians. Here, son, drink this holy water. Oh my God, I feel fantastic. Shh, keep it down. Don't tell everyone about our special water. And that's what they got going on. See him there? The one that looks a bit like Bella Lugosi? He's 500 year old, maybe. And Naples sounds like nipples, I've noticed. So what well, we got a load of stone going on. They're going to do a bit of work on the fort, star fort there. Let's have a look. She looks a bit wrecked. Don't see any people actually doing anything, though. Or any people full stop, really. That's a strange little sea mark, sea uh, fort, whatever it is. And little cute castles on the on the coast there. Yeah, sure is pretty. Look at that entrance into the side of the mountain. Windows there, there, there. Big that probably goes into that side of the mountain, which it does. And then you go all the way down there into the mountain pretty cool pretty cool okay we got loads more to come guys make sure to share this out we're gonna have a bit of a fun time in a minute with my images of the day loads of mind blows in there these look like little indian kids these don't even look italian so here's the italians having a game of tug of war with nothing they're pulling a boat in that building there is completely ruined Completely gone. Got full of holes as well. Why is it full of holes? Oh, because it's holy. Getcha, getcha. Yeah, something happened there, didn't it? Yeah, there is there. Just, I'm guessing buildings just went into disrepair after Armageddon. So there's inside maybe that cavern we've seen, I'm not sure, but there's a big underground cave which people are using goats and taking hay and it seems to be under the city 
So these had to be like, what well, you're telling me they lit them with candles or, or with sticks all the way up there. It had to be electric, guys. Or would you light them otherwise? So there's a lot of messed up old antiquity. This is Roman, obviously, apparently. Still there, but way, way good to visit this place. But I bet all of this stuff is fucking touristy now, isn't it? It's like, oh, I've got a Roman archer. Yeah, a Roman archer cost you 50 euros to see it. It's like, well, I can see it from here. Yes, but it's 50 euros to go up and experience the aura of the arch. So, yeah, I don't think I'll find all the Franks. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. That looks a bit melted, doesn't it? It's a bit fudged to cult. This happens in antiquity. The size of that returned to the also blitzed. Also got a load of grass on top for the classical world. All happened. Everywhere in the world, all at the same time, all of this caper came to an end. So I was wondering about this amphitheatre. Now I've I've talked about amphitheatres a dozen times, included them in my first book. Uh talked about amp meaning uh two duo and um, two uses for an amphitheater so were they really just to put gladiators in and do or maybe uh theatrical pieces well i'm not feeling that with this amphitheater for a start off there's a big depression in the bottom with tunnels underneath and these which may be trapdoors for not thinking about it but they have trapdoors yeah they would wouldn't they so yeah, um, theatrical pieces, but I definitely think they could have been like there's a lot of mud steel around the outside that they had removed. So they could have been like seal type devices, resonating devices. There could have been water, carrying water in at the times. How many generations of different peoples have gone through these places, guys? No, nobody knowing of their true history. This is an unusual item here in the foreground. Got some sort of, I don't know what kind of building this is. It looks like workshops, yeah. On the on the dock side, some warehouses. But look at this thing. It's eighteen seventy. This is. So what is that? Eighteen seventy. What looks like that in eighteen seventy? It pipe work. Who knows? But it looks pretty advanced, so just saying for 1870. But ships are getting bigger, could be sh half a ship. <laughs> Lahars, so mud flows that come from, as you can see, the volcanoes erupting. You get a large uh, Lahars of uh, moving debris, rock, but mud, mud floods. And you can see the mud floods happen here, and it's completely buried, these buildings, which is what we think happens on a bigger scale mud flood causing a lot of hills maybe there was no hills in the beginning maybe all of those lumpy bits you now see is from the reset maybe this place wasn't even lumpy before look at this a witness when i was in when we were going to california and we driving to california and there's an area on the way to california and it fucking man mangled my head it was basically mountains made of boulders Boulders the size of buses, the size of mountains, thousands of feet high, just in boulders. And you're like trying to reconcile in your brain how they could, you know, how could that have been there? Outside of like the whole thing had massive deep ocean and it all just came from above and just all settled in piles. So, yeah, this is a, a lahar. This is a mud flood. Uh, it's definitely flooded as far as them buildings there and stopped at the wall. But a lot of mud, a lot of mud. Mud flood evidence, and there's a mud flood came to the end of this street, and you can see how it just comes down to these windows. This is what we see everywhere in the world. Okay, guys, for this mud flood, these people are not too bothered though. They find it interesting. And you can climb up and over it. Mud flood is the thing. There's that strange lions on wobbly columns again. So you do spot anything in this post that I do not spot. Please do comment 
And if you find any questions or anything really interesting you want to add, put that in the comments section. Okay, guys? And I will go through that. So let's move on before I come back. Okay. Shame about my... Uh, excuse me. Come back for a second. <clears throat> Okay, 566 of you watching, I'm an hour and 39 minutes in, which is absolutely perfect. Okay, the hills are alive, and uh, not hills, that's for sure. Listen, um, I, I thank you perfectly imperfect. Um, I discussed this a few years ago with um, Flight of British Sub, and uh, we were wondering whether, you know, there was, you know, for Devon, for example, it's got all these like lumpy bits. It's just really weird um, topography to it. But if you put it in the terms of mud flow, yeah, and then you get some odd big, you know, mound uh, disturbance, which just always looks like mining spoil, because basically that's what it is, especially around, you know, Somerset and the Glastonbury area of Britain. There's definitely witness a lot of that going on there. So Annie, Dragon, Rebirth, Magavelli, and lovely Marlene and Roy and Alva Billy is in the house on Flat Earth British on the 23rd of March 2024. Wow. Kathleen, how did we get there? this month? This year is just zipping by. Time is losing its grip. Thriceborn. But with time, you get movement, movement and time. And the only time you can be without time is when you're in oblivion. So, Kathleen Muschetti, good to see you. And Starflower and Laura. Hey, Laura Carers Carbine. Oh, bring in the love. Much love to you and your families, everybody. I don't know what that says. It's an interesting name though, whatever it is. Okay, so next we're gonna look at Persia. <laughs> and it's interesting antiquity left over. And I'm uh, guessing you could call Persia um, Iran and surrounding and there's been loads of civilizations as we know uh, in the past in Persia. And you could you know look at the ones of uh, Cyrus or Darius the Great or what have you. We've all seen 300. We know this shit goes down, okay? So let's have a look at some of the antiquity. Here we go. Please make sure to share this off. Get some people over if they're bored on a flat day night. Hang out with some of the peeps. Do a ting. You know this goes down. Okay, so I'll share them um, atlases at the end of this post. Okay, we're moving on to, that's my images of the day, Persia. These are fantastic images, guys these ones okay <laughs> so um iran it's quite a story with them isn't there you know i've i know that they were like a free capitalist democracy until the shah um in the 1970s you would have uh women in tehran mini skirts and you know universities and all the rest of it in the modern day if you look at it their society is like america yeah, after that epoch, the thing that happened in 1972 when they put up the oil three quarters for the rest of the world. Um, I think they earned a lot of money from that, I do. And I think they've been, you know, do they spend it wisely by building stupid shit like in Dubai? I'm not sure about that. We're looking at Persia here, but Iran is, it looks like it's like America. They got stuff, they got stuff. And Tehran is a powerhouse. And they don't tell you about it. They don't tell you about the power of this country. The Persians, they're on the table. They didn't really show, they didn't, they didn't eat. So they have made efforts to, you know, they, in Iraq during the war in Baghdad, etc. Some of the existence of this civilization was smashed, demolished. Um, but you can see some of ancient Persia here. So this looks like a mud-flooded tower, doesn't it? I wonder what it was. So the windows are blocked off. There's no... Why would they have windows that were blocked off? 
Uh, high up door up there, which is a window. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. So we're looking at we got ancient writings here, Persian writings, and there's a guy who's guiding them. I wonder what they would say. They could definitely decipher that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. I'm here. Good, 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 good gun drops. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, so somebody went to the effort to chisel down on the side of the rocks, which I find infinitely interesting. Got enough bullets, dude. See, they 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 all look mean and unhappy when they got guns and stuff. If you noticed, right? So I wonder what cracked that seismic activity, earthquakes, ancient weapons massive biblical style battles with vimana type weapons etc especially in this area i bet they were using all of the electromagnetic technology you can imagine <coughs> excuse me so i wonder what he's doing because he's not actually doing anything is he? he's just going like like that whatever that is looks like something's missing maybe or incomplete so yeah persian um, that book that they won't let me give you um for the Bodin library shows you the color and the detail in persian art and oh my god it is just the most beautiful it is just it does something to your consciousness it's just like wow them guys must be proper I was going to say tripping, but I meant highly, high state of consciousness. So, who we got here? We got some characters. This one looks like Skeletor. He's got flowers in his hat, though. He seems to be giving him something. That's half buried. Cool. Imagine having the real story and getting out with these clues where you could uncover. Halt! Oh, what's he doing? Look at the size of these reliefs. Oh, he's getting on his knees and doing oh sire, sire. Oh, that's good. Okay. And you're such a massive antiquity of Persia. Some of these sites are just we know nothing about because it's like Iran, isn't it? It's like years ago, it was always blacklisted off the friendly table. Was always, everyone was just moaning about him. Oh, they've got nuclear capabilities. They're probably going to nuke us now, especially if they get missiles. It's like, uh, so you can have them, but they're not allowed. Why? Ah, oh, because they're meant to be unstable and we're not. Oh, all right, then. What's the only country that's ever nuked anyone if they were real? Okay, forget about that. So that's a really weird temple hmm. so uh, obviously and um, there's a door that goes into something that's inside of this massive melted rock thing just and why so high you need a ladder to get up there because you could fly in there everyone was flying of course they were you all see black adam well, he's like, he's like super, he got godlike powers. Just floats around. That's what was going on. Just float around. Look at this messed up stuff in there, in the water. So not to make it last, it's too smashed up, but a lot of work, a lot of stone work. So this one's partially buried. Mm. looks like they've dug a bit of weight to show that here might be a little bit more buried okay some obelisks asian obelisks no longer holding anything up pillars so so we have armies and these things here which you know they're all over these bas reliefs i don't think they're a tree at all these things you know army tree army cat tree that doesn't actually make any sense i think these things are something else 
see him in Egypt, like energy coming off him, um, Mesopotamia, uh, and the Assyrians. You see all of it. You see it on all of them. So we've got the ego. We've seen a million times. So they do seem to have similarities to the Egyptians. So I wonder what happened to that civilization. Wallop is what? Whoa, look at that. Size of it. I wonder why they cut all this up. Why would they do that? It's not decoration, is it? Something fitted in, rolled up there. Something mechanical, something fitted in there. I just like tries to imagine like docking mechanisms. You know, if you came in and just like if you were a flying ship, just zzz, lock into the building. You see that a lot because they would have had flying machines. So a red brick bottom, outer covering, and all of that detail. Can you imagine that in his heyday, guys? And I believe you me, that's all different color tiles. It's out of this world, all of it. It's all beautiful interlaced geometric patterns. Wow, where's the obelisks and the columns? Really unusual tops to them, though. But you can see the torus on them. So, so we recognize more cave dwellings. Christ, they're, they're all like cross shape. There's nothing to do with Christians. Loads of bas reliefs. Wow, this site is incredible. And look at them melting plates. Wow, that's incredible. And the doors are so high up, guys. It's like, how'd you get up there? And you got these, ah, that's interesting. You got these little uh, bits missing here, like something fits in there. Something fits in the whole of this square bit. I can guarantee you. And then that would allow you to step out and go into there. It's like a heliport or something. Or some, something fits in there, fits in there, fits in there. Z and then step into there and they inside the building for protection. Whoever knows what. Radiation. Um, harmful sun. Um, poison air. And where does that go? Wow. Size of that entrance. See, these, these people look like they just discovered the stuff as well. It's just... These bash release are the clues, though, guys. Okay, we got um, this dude stabbing the lion in the head uh, with a knife and in the gut at the same time. But the lion has scales and wings. So it's a dragony scale. Don't think that's inky, do. Don't know. Uh. But the bas reliefs, why did they do that in antiquity? They don't do it so much nowadays. Tell their story in stone. Interesting. Anyway, let's have a look at some images of the day and see what we can muster up. Is it, guys? No, I don't speak French. Obviously, I don't speak French, but I can understand this word, yeah, fanny. Uh, du fanny, it do, in de. Uh, de fanny means two fannies. So is he actually saying that I can see two fannies? Yes, is what he's saying in French. They're playing balls or in France. Boils, boils. I play balls all the time, guys. So, this won't mean anything to 99% of you. But if you're one of the percentage you're from Cardiff City, where I'm from, this filled my skyline when I was a kid. This is Geskin Steelworks. It's gone now in the modern day, but it dominated Cardiff skyline. It was huge. And no matter where you looked, it was everywhere. You could see just chimneys, these massive towers, the steelworks, long gone. I used to have relatives live there. This is interesting. And this is why. Female ejaculations, not that I think about that much. Female, female ejaculate is called the amrita. What's that called? Amrita. Amrita, amrita is almost the same words, which means nectar of bliss 
the nectar of bliss it's too much coincidence for me if a woman is basically healthy and emotionally balanced well that's only a very small percentage of the women population <laughs> i'm joking it is healing elixir for men it's um actually an elixir for longevity for men Ooh. so in case in such a case uh, a man who is gifted um, with this by a woman should drink with gratitude and joy nectar of bliss i think they're on about a cup of joy juice i'm sorry I, i'm confused i'm sorry i did that now broke out with a sweat and everything mud flood so this is supposed to be a picture of what is a picture of um, seattle and what they were supposed to do is like lift all the buildings up and move them according to the photographic narrative but we found years ago that none of them a lot of them are not actually showing that and this is one example what you're seeing is they're not really lifting the mud um, excuse me lifting the buildings and shifting them here they dug all of the mud out and exposed the buildings, like the entrances, the doors, and the windows that are all beneath these buildings. Hmm. Old entrances and old windows from before the mud clay. Okay, this is interesting. Not so much as I don't know how they got the statue to like, he's doing like a bite and sniffing her hair. And it's the 1920s, and she's like in a silent movie. I don't know if that's Fay Ray, but she's naked. Um, I, AI, you can't see nothing. It's covered in flowers and garlands. Okay, they got to change up to a Phoenician who looks like Bacchus it is with the year. And then um, King Kong, who has been through the Ant Man process and is a lot smaller now, and doesn't know what to do anymore. Last time he had her in his hand, and now. He's only little. Oh, King Kong. We like King Kong. Look at this, fucking criminals. Yeah. Phillips. Philip Storkner is a weed head and a tramp, according to San Diego Police Department, 1944. Look at her. Look. She smokes pot. Fucking junkie. Tramp, because she smokes pot. She's obviously a tramp. I think that's really unfair and racist and, and a whole load of shit, you know, of San Diego police force. You want to go and catch some people on a highway that are shooting fucking bullets like I witnessed when I was in San Diego. Yeah, I like her. I think she got a spirit, man. Yeah. Oh, let me bad down to Phyllis anyway. We like Phyllis, don't we, guys? She had it bad. They called her a fucking weed head and, and a tramp. It's nothing nice, is it? That's like prostitute in America, isn't it? Still not like a prostitute. Just because she had weed. She might have been. I'm just saying, I don't think so. Anyway, so what is available in this Hall of Wonders is the world's um, which says Martin on there. But anyway, it's a rayon, a rayon Z. Okay, and it costs you 10 cents. So what is a rayon Z? Um, it's a <coughs> wonderful ray of light. Okay, and what does it do? Um, I don't know, guys. You'd have to go in and find yourself, yourself a good time travel, pay 10 cents, and then find out what the rayon Z actually does. Um, I think it invigorates you, makes you feel fantastic. They look way, way healthy, don't they? But they haven't been aging. So... Some Indian, I think this is no, I think this might be Angkor Wat actually. But check out the details, the things left at entropy. It's old, it's not Angkor Wat, it's got cross, but it's all uh, motted and holy and porous. See that geometric pattern over the door, how beautiful! Wow rough but really nice so yeah mud flooded in um, antiquity and here they are again in persia digging out um, asian persian antiquity which is deep in the mud 
After meth led. There's more. This one, he's way buried. He's a sort of sphinx. Asian Persian. And this guy, he thought, well, I'll go into San Francisco after the entire city is being like literally erased to the ground. And I think I'll take the time to paint this beautiful bit of the Asian world, which is in San Francisco, which has survived this bit of Rome or the classical world. It's a good idea, and that it just feel, feels weird that you should just take the time. But that painting's out there. You can see that painting is available. So I was going to have this as a thumbnail because you know, it's just because we were talking about youth and health. And she's youthful, uh, but she's also a, a lily. She's doing the lily. But lilies are not actually that nice. I mean, they are beautiful and they smell nice, but they're representative of death, apparently. So. The prowler is on the loose, and they literally tell you this in an advert years ago. It's really weird. Bring out the animal in your man with an irresistible set of lounge pajamas. Top is soft polyester. Okay, no, no thanks. Bad itch. <clears throat> I like cotton. So an interesting little ship, moseying into port. With a load of Phoenician stuff and a shit ton of antique tech up on the roof. Sweet, cool. So, yeah, I was thinking about coding in architecture. You know, they coded the whole of Washington, D.C. with owls and Masonic compass and all of the stuff. I was wondering about the Louvre. Well, with the Louvre, um, Pinochet apparently put up a pyramid outside made of glass with 666 panes in it. Although I'm in the camp these days of not thinking 666 is actually a bad number at all. And there might be a lot of like, who's giving us all this information? Could it be actually just bad press? Is what I'm thinking at this stage. Because who am I listening to? The Roman fucking Catholics. So um, there's the pyramid and it's in the forecourt, which is like ugly fight the longest building in you know one of the longest fronted buildings in the world the louvre um art museum in paris so interesting that they got a cube or something in the what looks like an eye but they got a cube within a cube and a cube within that and that is like a tesseract isn't it so why would they do that and there's more going on with this with this uh, symbol here as well phone's going to run off and also with this pyramid in a pyramid and two pyramids there one there and one there and one there so it's a code and i'm afraid i don't understand but i can see some really interesting things with it if you see anything that i can't please tell it's really weird time travel is it possible i don't know but apparently in um 2018 a man named diego and discovered a mysterious coin with the year 2039 imprinted on it. The coin features Nazi symbolism as well as the words um, Neva Alamira Mal Almania, uh, which translates to a new Germany. Some say it's a hoax, while others claim the proof is a parallel universe. Well, I don't know one way or the other. I'm saying that is proper interesting, especially what with Germany winning the war and everything. So this is in a um, actually a German uh, stately home, you could call it, where they got a library, a palace or a castle. It's like, what are you going to read? There's a Phoenician again with the flowing vegetables or whatever they are. They look like rhododendrons, but I'm yet to find out what they are. It's got a face on his head. Really nice, that, though. It's all made of wood as well. It's got someone on his head. There's feet. It's got someone on his head. That's really weird. I don't know. So, this is... Technology went from um, this in 1800s uh, to this in 200 years. Mm. But it went from here to here 
in 1500 years i think you could add a couple of thousand years on that the horse and cat apparently being used by human civilization just like you know like we just never learnt anything or had any technology ever before just horses and fucking cars whatever so this woman although nobody's complaining is hogging the front of the stage when Jimi hendrix plays a snazzy boxy lady <laughs> Like that, yeah. I think that's Eric Bird's in there, not the animals. Might be. So Jimmy, awesome Jimmy Hendrix. So this is Olga. Uh, I think that's her name. Out of Abba, and um, this was this is what like. Remember, I just mentioned in the beginning of the vlog about switching off age. This would have been awesome for her, okay? Because she looked like this in the 1970s yeah and she looks like this now and i'll be unkind i know age comes to us all but i'm just staying with all the oogles and many living in the best culture um in, in the world um sweden best standard of living in europe uh, i think she's a fair bit better than that but you know who am i to judge she's jimmy hendrix with his bird and his, his bird is either um what the fuck is it looking at mama cass Oh, she's thinking, oh, my God, you're such a legend. I love you. What is the eyes of Jimi Hendrix's bird saying when she looks at Mama Cass? Mama Cass does look fucked, though, doesn't she? So, hey, Jimmy. Hey, Mama. Probably something like that. So this is what they're doing in the Vatican, yeah? If you hear pop, 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 pop. They're trying to get de-stressed from basically all of the bad things that they do to people by squeezing the air out of the bubble, bubble wrap. Now, we've all done it. What's good is you get a big bit that goes, get loads of big bangs as well. So it's good for therapy if anyone's like, you know, it's working for him isn't it? and he's got all the sins in the world on him. It's not all bad news though, but history. Silver liner minor is this, okay? There it was in 1980, looking like a motorway and shit. And here it is in 2022. They brought the canal back and the grass. So it's not all bad news with history. And they're doing the same in Cardiff as well. They're digging up the canals that they covered over in the 60s for some reason. Well, they're digging them back out again because they look pretty and it's water. So do you think they could build this in a modern day? A lamppost? In Brussels, I ask you guys, they got nothing like that. The lampposts of today just shit, aren't they? They're just mitts of aluminium with a, a light on top. There's just nothing exciting happening at all. And any bits of decoration I notice in my own city from this era are just left. Is this some idea of a joke? Information, you are here in your mind. We're all is. That's why the universe and everything will end when you die. So I do I think manifestation is a thing. I don't think it's a thing for everybody because if that was the case, there wouldn't be any war, would there? There wouldn't be any starving people, would there? there be any suffering, would there? Because somebody would manifest it all better. But I do think mystics are able to do manifestation of a sort or magic is what I think. So again, you've got the dome with Jesus and he's riding his uh, wrecking ball uh, with his gang. Okay, he's got stuff though. It's all going to be good, don't worry. There will be no trouble. I was studying a map of Panama and I was thinking to myself, well, I've seen evidence of there being a canal there in the past on an old map. And then I looked and I seen that the rivers actually went from here, there's one, it goes all the way up here, 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 to Panama City. And there's another river as well. So I really do think they can navigate it before they're saying. There's another one here that goes from here. Oh, it breaks off. There's one that goes all the way anyway. There's one there and there's another one that goes all the way to Panama City, to like basically the Pacific. So, you know, if they wanted to build a navigable canal, all they had to do was build like a dig from there to there. 
and then you would have been out into the you know into the Atlantic. That far away, and they didn't do it. No fucking way. They were navigating it before the before the Panama Canal. There's just no way they weren't. <laughs> I think the Panama Canal is a psyop anyway. Don't think they did it like that. So this is um, very popular in the um, ABD, LBGTT, MBQ thing, whatever it is. Crocheted stitch. Fashion for the open-minded man. Are you an open-minded man? Well, hopefully you don't wear your bra or wear a bra at all um, on the outside of your crocheted jumper. I always was very suspicious of anybody that talks to me with a cravat on doing the Noel Cowards, yeah? Um, don't, don't cravat me, man. Pike's Pear or Bust, 1860. So I think he might be selling medicines or something. There's a lot of these people that went from town to town selling snake oil and stuff, wasn't there? But they did have some miracle cures because they knew clues that people didn't and they come in and say, oh, I feel fantastic. That's a hot one. Jean says there's no skin on his wieners. So he's been circumcised. Oh no, wiener sausages. Okay, these skinless wieners, and there's no covering of any kind of them. That's why I like the taste. It's so good. She likes the taste of his wien, his skinless wiener guys. It's called marketing. It's like the you know, current message going on. Third plot. What I noticed about this German castle was this there's no coal fire in here at all they got steel plates steel plates and two big flashy androns so i think it's that tech plus you could really have a raging fire with those unbelievable artworks over the fire when the smoke all comes bellowing out which it does by the way when you have a chimney fire i'm not sure what this is on top it looks like a big battery but these people in India putting flowers, could be a reliquary, could be a toenail of Buddha, something. Buddha, they're behind me. But isn't that big, whatever it is? Would love to know what it is, though. So, again, with ancient tech, I get the buzz of, like, beat me up Scotty with these, don't you? It's like, this, these are obviously giants, but there is giant army. Uh, this is like the leader. He's like a universal master criminal, okay? And he's like time bandits. And he's come to this time because he wants to steal. Um, well, there's nothing left to steal. It's all gone. But he's going to find something to steal. And these, see these things they got above their heads? It's like you're getting Star Trek or, or Joe Knighty, you know, where you could beam. Yeah, just discomporiate and re atomize somewhere else yeah portal technology they've been showing us in hollywood forever and here's these and all of this looks like a machine even at the bottom it really does and look at this thing on his head it looks like a beam interdimensional traveling it's the thing <laughs> i wonder if this uh, statue of antiquity knows if it looks like a knob it's got a bad arm i got bad arm. my arm's dropping off so this Hellenistic bars is showing a lady riding two, I'm going to say porpoises, and two, and a lady riding a seahorse, and a lady, lady light, riding an octopus. Why was that so difficult to say? So swastikas, they've been found on Minoan pottery in Crete, okay, and everywhere there in the world you can see india africa arabia loads in europe very popular in germany um japan had one so um it's a stinky old vault i don't know there's that thing again i've already showed you that one but it's a different pattern on this one but the lions on pillars Excuse me. Oh, you just move on. My amazing images gone. Ah, oh, there you are. 
So um, this is um, a reliquy of um, apparently some famous dude in antiquity. So they put all of this weird stuff around him. It's like an exoskeleton, isn't it? Like Robocop. So here's Adam and Eve, how it all started. Oh, yes, you came from Adam and Eve. And they had this woman there, Lilith, who was a lizard. And look, look at um, look at Adam, man, with his fat dreadlocks, man. And he got no clothes on. I think, I think that's a bit disgusting. Put something on. Maybe a fig leaf. So um, there's been a big discussion about the shape of the Earth, hasn't there? Whether it's a ball spinning in a vacuum of space, or whether it's actually flat. Um, I'm here to tell you. I think it's more double bubble, but like not like a pear, more like a double bubble, like a bun. And I think a good destination um, on Earth to visit at this time would probably be around the Mediterranean. It would be really warm, moist this time of year. So it's a bit cold up in uh, Canada, as you can see. Australia, uh, they're a bit cheeky, aren't they? So you learn something new every day. So they got this on the side of a hill in Britain. There's something going on with Britain. I blame Top of the Pops. I blame Pants People. I blame Hot Gossip, the way I am. But yeah, you can literally go up that mountain and stand on his member. Let's just call it that. Okay. But why has he got like a crazy face and he's got hair on with fucking, with a bat? It's like, you're not going to get like, oh, oh, fucking hell, I'm going to smack some of his head in if you're really horny. What? Makes no sense. And look at the length of his arms. Stupid. Check this out. Frogs, and it is old Indian art, um, as in Native American, and it's showing the four angels and the inertia play. The whole thing is in it. Ten Tauruses. Um, I, everything that I explained in the Great Secret Never Told is in that image. Amazing. Even got like a black sun in the middle, which is interesting. Here is, um, see, this guy went to a party back in ancient Rome and everyone started sniggering. And he's like, what? Look. He's like, what? He's like, the hat, mate, the hat. So like, why it's fucking fantastic. What are birds at us? So I thought at first they looked like rocket flames sticking out the bottom. This is a, an Egyptian ornament. Uh, it's got scarab beetle and the golden sun and all of these golden bits coming down which i think is magnetism or plasma of some sort and then you've got like what look like flames coming out on the bottom i think this is um like a schematic for some sort of because they've got the blue scarab beetle which has electromagnetic properties as we know and it's big time something going on with that in egypt and this thing looks like a device this is like they're showing us what some device they have Proton fusion generator. Maybe it was like a Medusa gun. So just somebody just coincidentally found a tree. I don't think that's AI. I think that's a real thing. Maybe. Right oh yes, people are there. Um ah, oh, they love tweet. So check this out for tweepy decoration. Excuse me. So we got Celestial Magnetic. Hey man, free soul hippie, battery. Yeah, somebody had to get up there on a ladder, some monk and paint all that on back in the day. But yeah, 10 types of trippy, makes you wonder why they did it. Again with the technology, okay? So um, I'm figuring from these discs, you've just seen on the Scarab Beetle one, and they got these things coming down again, like wires. So, and then she's touching both the wires and she's got an ank on one of the hams, which we thought was a resonation device anyway. I literally think literally nearly everything in this, and especially that chair, what's with the chair? It's to do with advanced technology and understood to us. This is um, the oldest fossilized turd known in history. It was a Viking turd. So the story is, is a Viking took a shit and it fossilised in the year it is today. So I bet he never knew that when he dropped would last so long, longer than him. 
I never thought, I bet you never thought that you'd be watching a vlog tonight and seeing a fossilized shit. Hmm? Learn something new every day. Look at this. I love this. I don't think it's old. I'm not sure, actually. I just love the brickwork. Somewhere in the Arab world. It's, I, I do know, actually. I can't remember. Oh, Tunis. Tunis. Hey, welcome to me. So, not only buildings are beautiful, but trees are too, wouldn't you say? Trees are a work of art. Preserved for uh, eternity, says he. I don't know. Oh, Alma Billy. Looks digital. I don't think it is. I check them for like digital. I don't think. I, I try not to do AI ones if I do. I know they're taking over. So this guy took the time to make a salt mandala. So he's used some sort of salt dispenser and he's made a beautiful geometric pattern. So a big circle and then he puts circles around that, circles around that. I was thinking on doing one of these in pen. I reckon I could do one. So I might try a mandala, something to do. We've tried it this week. So imagine relaxing on your beautiful mosaic floor. Nice. I like it. <laughs> and this is um, an ancient spoon, um, African, and it's got a little bum and a pair of bosoms. Just to remind him while he's away working. So that is um, like obviously seepage into some sort of lake, but it's interesting that the trees are all around him and the leak, the seepage into it looks like also a tree or electrical discharge or the human brain or vascular system or just we are trees that's the end of it so this is in california on the coast and apparently these are volcanic uh from nature apparently geological volcanic happenings on the coast of california but you can see these things come up to the top and they wobble, essentially look like squiggly wobbly columns. Are they volcanic? Do they happen anywhere else? I couldn't possibly tell you. But they look more like a building than natural geo geological things or some tech. So here's another crazy Gaudi uh, building. He designed a few in um, Barcelona. So decorating human skulls. Very popular, it's like Scrimshaw, but for human skulls. I've got a couple of dancing things, they have wings on their ears. Weird. Oh, let's have a look at the eyes. Slits, not holes. Some of your Mandala effect people might be interested in that. It's got slits and not holes. There's holes now. Yeah? Anybody? Shiva. Yeah, Gaudi's a, a bit of a mad head. Sheila, what you say, man? Yes. Yeah, uh, slits not holes now, isn't it? Oh, wow. That was a catch. So you never know what you're going to discover. So these are foss fossilised um, in Australia, um, in trees. Oh, wow. It's just a really unusual shape to them, isn't it? Why would nature exhibit that? So, yeah, opal naturally forming in uh, fossilised trees in Australia. So these are in Europe. They have loads of stupid uh, festivals in Europe, don't they? They have the ones with that crazy Santa Claus fucking creature that they have. And they have these, imagine this coming down the road if you had no warning of anything going on. You know, you were going out for a coffee, just went there on holiday, and this comes down the road. Yeah, and that's what I laid down. What the fuck was that? So here's a Roman gold leaf necklace. So they are, I can't remember how many, it was something like 60 odd individual leaves of gold that have survived all that time. They're beautiful. So look at this 1790, the British Museum was up and running. This ticket entitles uh, to a site of the British Museum at the hour of one 
on Wednesday the 3rd of March 1790. No money is to be given to servants. So apparently the British Museum was up and running 1790, but you could only go and visit it for one hour and you used to have to have a ticket with the date on. 1790. Phew, wonder what things they had there. Here's more Omo people from Ethiopia. They got some good stuff. I don't know why she got sticky buds in her head though. But she, I think she's singing. Or going la 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 la. Or something like that. But she looks happy and beautiful. There's a guy, right? He did a garlic crop and his fucking ship came in. Yeah. He's like, guys, this is all my garlic. Do you want to buy some garlic? I've got a million garlics. He's nailed it. It's a garlic millionaire. This is the hat of a whale, a large whale. Um, I, I years ago people were saying, "Oh, the hat's not what they say." I was using you know YouTube videos saying that uh, you know the hat was completely something else, not a pump as such. Well, working on Taurus technologies. Um, there's a lot of pipes and stuff in the, in the hat, isn't there? It looks very technological, doesn't it? it? Looks like a bit of plumbing, doesn't it? Sure, all of this is artificial. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Excuse me, excuse me. What we got here is some beautiful ladies. 1900. Ah, beautiful spirit. Renowned British military surgeon James Barry was a pioneer in his fields and enjoyed and celebrated a highly accomplished career for over 50 years. After his death in 1865, he discovered that he was actually a woman named Margaret Ann Buckley. So there he is there, famous physician, and he was a chick hiding out, pretending to be a bloke, because I don't suppose women were allowed. This is a later um, Benini effort, 1850s, but he pulled it right off with a stone. They say it's that era, there's no way of knowing. Uh, 560 odd of you watching thanks for being here today guys it's absolutely awesome this is a bonsai with some effort involved with the treehouse involved i'm guessing the guy's got a lot of time on his hands to be able to do bonsai that way but i do like bonsai trees do you like a game of chess do you like to play with this game of chess So, yeah, apparently cave paintings have pissed me off. I don't know if it's a thing, you know. I don't know what to make of it. I can't imagine we all lived in caves and done stupid stuff like painting deers and antelopes and stuff. But there you go. So, apparently, they sprayed paint on their hands, the people of this cave painting. What if it was the other way around? They were on the inside, like, reaching out, going, ah, get us out. Strange thing, anyway. This is in Berlin, a lot of mermaids. Or maybe they're not now because they got out of the water. But naked people, I'm sure it was perfectly acceptable in antiquity. Not, now it's just like, you know, something different, isn't it? They changed it. It's like we were born naked. We died, you know, we don't die, die naked, you know what I mean? So look at that for an organ. And a nice bit of exterior woodwork on this building. in i think it's portugal look like bits of wooden antiquity but exterior wood anyway i don't see too much of that it's really beautiful and really beautiful decoration so something missing in his hand just come off but it's an old mosaic and he's got like something in the bag there and he's riding his cheetah which runs really fast um, you see a lot of that. I don't know if they were actually writing cheetahs. And he's banging a drum. He's got a drum. Well, they're really writing wild animals. So check this out. This is um most complicated dance I think you could see in on anywhere. You see him on YouTube and that, but um why are there so many arms with the Krishna experience and many 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 uh personifications as one deity is aspects of us i think 
So this is the oldest handbag in antiquity, and it was found in the fucking forgot. But nice geometric patterns on it. I think it was the Balkans, Bulgaria, something like that. But a handbag, one of the, the oldest antiquity. And what you've got to ask yourself is what possessed her? I think that's really stupid. You've got to walk all the way back. And then you're going to get that overwhelming feeling of falling forward. And then, like, no no room for error. Once then, you fucking splat it. Stupid. A nice little bit of perspective, yeah? All of that's put into thought. All of that. The checkerboard floor. So, it's coming up to half past 11. I believe I've been going for two and a half hours now. So, let's get through these images. I'm going to be wrapping this up shortly. This is Egyptian, apparently. Uh, well, Python, isn't it? But look at the gold in that. And the different coloured whatevers. It doesn't even look Asian, does it? It's crazy. So uh, I know a few people who love this little bookshop. This is in Raleigh Gardens in Ranley Gardens in London. An old bookshop. And look at all them. Jammed in a window. So that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Have a look. There's that one. This is in India. And I find it really interesting. This star I thought it's got a depression in the middle. Like something, you know, like steps as well. Like something clicked in there. Because it wasn't a building. I found that really interesting. I haven't seen that in any others. Deep depression, cross in the middle, like something just lands on it, clicks in, recharges, and then off it goes again. Advanced tech. Well, this Buddha looks way happy. Oh, yes, it's lovely being enlightened. I don't have to worry anymore. This has apparently happened in an earthquake. This is in Myanmar. And it's uh, apparently an earthquake has cracked this temple right in the middle. So they say. Well, must have been the weakest point there then because of the door. It weakened the whole thing. And then right up from the door. So it makes sense, really. <laughs> so there's a sphinx. Then pigeons, they couldn't give, up, couldn't give up two hoots. That is the most famous statue in antiquity. They don't give two hoots. They're going to nest in there. They're going to rot it away. They're going to uh, shit all over it. It's not very big, is it? If that's the size of a pigeon. Biggest statue. So this is something we'd all like to do. It's cover. Oh. Natalie Wood in, in cream and food. And then make it all off. So what wood doesn't float? Yeah, Natalie Wood. I think Robert Wagner has definitely something to do with it. I'm just checking that out there. It might not be true. Um, so I don't know what's happening here, but this African fella's just turned up looking like Prince Akeem, and he's got a load of gold and a load of money. So I've uh, they've just given him that and purchased him a whole. I think the likely story is he's just turned up and he's bought himself a, a British family. I bought the British family. I'm now king of this family. Maybe. <laughs> so there's a lot of trannies in history, have you noticed? So Lady Patricia Nixon, yeah, happy Rockefeller. Oh my God, let's have a look at these. Oh dear. Uh, Lady Lou Hoover and Audrey Kellogg. Oh, Kellogg's, he didn't like sexes. That's why he put bromide in the cornflakes. Queen Louise of Sweden. Oh dear. Prince Helen of Greece. Oh, fuck you know. And Prince... Kuja of Persia, stone the crows. So this is where Madison Square Gardens is now, was this, in the past 1862, I think, much later. There's no people around for New York City, though. There's the massive tower, long gone. We have a ton of antiquotec and landing platform availability on there long gone it's prince william's conk has changed i don't know why that is conks don't change over time but there's a lot of weirdness going on with them at the moment so do you know what these are guys these are the vape of the 1980s these are what we used to call hot knives what you do 
often curiously and sometimes quite dangerously, um, heat knives, and then you would touch a bit of hash with one pipe and stick it to the, stick it to the knife and then crush the hash with your knife. You get a big plume of smoke which you suck through a, a milk bottle with the bottom missing or another utensil for sucking up the smoke. This is called a hot knife and it is um, the vape of the day. Okay, history lesson this is, guys, in case you don't know. In Like Flynn, okay, this is a film that I'm going to have to watch again. I can't find it, but I would like to watch it in Like Flynn. He's like um, an American James Bond, James Colburn. So this is in a Newcastle. Um, there in the past and there in the modern day. The house is missing. With the photo bomb, Beatles in 1966, and John Lennon's looking over him and look, thinking, get away, little shit. I oh, might not be thinking that. So that is um, some rock carving, and it looks again like four angels uh, with a hole in the middle. And if you don't know what this is, it's a film bar that I, I would strongly urge you to see. It's called Tiger Bay. It's the story of Cardiff. There's a young Stan Laurel in the Victorian era, off to be a funny man in Hollywood. Hollywood. He was the embankment in London, traffic jams in the early days. Not everyone's got a roof, a lot of convertibles back then. Uh, traffic jams have been around a long time. Blondie, you son of a... <coughs> bow, bow, bow. Greatest film ever in the history of Westerns. One of the best next to like magnificent seven it's good bads in the ugly okay this was a brilliant film and they had some of the best american civil war battle sequences you've ever seen in any movie and it's on for two and a half hours it's on youtube you can watch it it's brilliant um lee van cleef is a legend in it angel yeah we like lee van cleef so yeah this is what the ancient uh, romans or the hellenistic era were doing they were um, skipping around to bikinis, as they were quite common, playing beach volleyball. Better than not like them beach volleyball thongs that they wear today, which are just, I don't think anyone actually watches the beach volleyball, do they, guys? Is there rules to it? I don't think so. I don't think anyone would even take notice that there was. I don't think that's the reason beach volleyball even exists. I know it's the men don't do it, do they? It would be fucking weird if we did. So. Oh, I'm in a male beach volleyball team. We're playing at seven o'clock. Do you want to come? Uh, no, you're all right. So is this Switzerland. Like Donald, that phone jacker. So yeah, this is in a, in a in a temple in India. And it's a rebuild of a temple. But it just goes to show the grandeur that must have once existed. You look at it. So oh, that's in St. Petersburg, a library. Somebody's made the effort to paint all them ceilings, by the way. They've got that in Moscow underground, though. Oh, she lost her head. See that a lot. This is an umbrella shop in Lisbon. And they've got a, oh, excuse me, strange architecture considering this, uh, you know, this is Chinese influence, isn't it? Chinese dragon, but it's not China, it's Portugal. This woman is 106 year old, she lives in the Philippines, and she's a tattoo artist, and she's got wicked trousers, and she looks awesome, cool. Don't you think? 100 year old, don't be shit about her, I think. She switched off the aging, she still looks youthful. So, yeah, somebody put thought into designing that, just bringing that to your attention. So, what have you been doing? See how dogs know that they're doing that when they, when they back off. They're like, oh shit, look what I've done. Here they are now. I'll get in the corner where I'm innocent, the innocent corner. Oh, I'm feeling very hollow today. Ah, I'm better now because I've got a beautiful little horse to look at. Ah. Oh, you're nice, you're nice too. Can I be your friend? Yeah. Be your friend, 
My mum said I'm beautiful. She was right, little goat. She was right, you're lovely. And this that's actually might be an adult. Peepy goat. So maybe we should all just leave and go to Africa. I think they got it better there. They used to have it worse, but it can't be worse than you. So I think we're all like sort of just emigrate. Because this is the hitchhikers in Africa, guys. Just saying, yo. Just Mary, the baby, under the seashell with all the Phoenician stuff going on. I wonder why that is. The veiled beauty. So apparently they can't fly over to bed. So people said in my comments, well, that's cause um, they're massive mountains. But I don't know if that's the case, guys, because they're 10,000 feet high in the Rockies. And there was definitely planes going over the Rockies. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't be able to get to California, would they? So you can fly over 10,000 feet. I don't think that's the case. Um, they're at 40,000 feet anyway. So why can no one fly over the Tibetan Plateau is something that I'd like to know. Thank you, Angela. That's really lovely of you. Oh. Okay, coming back in a minute. Let's get through these images because I'm running out of uh, steam. Okay, perfect timing. They're almost over with. Okay, I'm coming back. So I have, ooh, there's 530 of you still watching. Thanks. I have loads more to come, guys, but I really need to go do my thing. Because I'm running out of steam and pain. So thanks everybody for coming. Two hours, 40 minutes, that'll do me. Martin says, Matt, Matt, good to see you. Rusty Woodpecker's in the house. Double hugs tonight, Pamela Swan. Double hug each. It's Pamela Swan. Thrice. Uh, yeah, he lives with my Lawrence. My son, uh, Nancy, uh, takes care of Benny Keynes. Thanks, Shiva. I got loads more, but I'll have to do another recorded video later in the week. Huh? All right next week thank you dragon rebirth well i have been able to keep an eye on um on chat so i don't know what going on there. so i hope you all have been having a nice time or getting on a, a cool people combat finger to see you there you are liddy emily good to see you thanks thanks for uh, thanking me <laughs> so i think yeah probably hi paul uh, minor mandala effect happened all the time. No, they do, but that one with the eyes, um, the skull's got holes now, not slits. So that is like a mandala effect residue cut right there, which is pretty, pretty good. Gone. Day nights. Good to see you. Okay, we move on. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Thanks, everybody who's been here this week. Thanks, everybody who helps and supports, brings the love, keeps the vibration up, which is quite really important for if poppy okay shit yeah. okay joel good to see you michael valley pamela who's woohooing us hey pamela sweet nurse who else we got jam arcus good to see you oh no all of them things the maps and everything i'll be linking up at the moment i finish this uh, post okay guys tw and it's Marianne. Thank you, Marianne. Okay. Right, Alistair. Right, let's check if that's all of everything. Yeah, I was going to talk about AI Robo Guards a little bit more, the Omni Savior and everything, but I don't think I'm bothered now anyway. Free Soul Hippie activated pineal glands. That's awesome. Um, I've had fun listening to you, Matt, in lovely presentations. Thank you. It's been an awesome flat day. Love flat days. It's a good little buzz. Oh, peeps getting together. Special bunch of not give a fuckers. Having a good time. Sure know how it's done. Nobody is wasting anybody. And the immortal words of Cyrus. The warrior. The warrior did it. What a shit, anyway. A brilliant plan, didn't he, Cyrus? Little wink, good to see you, my sweetness. Little tiny hugs for little wink, Laura. Um, back on goodness. Okay, you're back. Thank you, Kerry. Adam. Okay, I'm going to cut out now, guys. Make sure to share this out if you would. Thank you for everything. Make sure to like this video if you did. My flat day.
Ooh, epinephrine. Oh, yeah. Groovy granny. And Kay's in the house. Um, and thank you, Angela's uh, sweetness. Just all good things. Okay, guys, all good things. And much love to you all. Keep it positive. And I'll be back very, very soon. i got to get off. Okay, I missed anyone, John? Big dog. Be a guy. What's happening, be a guy? Tarzan. Ah. Ooh, what is he? It's Jane. She's a funny looking fella. This is girl. Oh. Sarkip, what's that? Saribik. Good to see you. Thank you for the uh, trees are the lungs of the earth, indeed. We love trees. Where would we be without them? Thank you, Adam, my brother. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Isabel. Nice one, mate. Nancy. Okay. Flat Zuma, thank you, Chick. Life is real. Thank you, everybody, for being epic and being here. Gratitude to you all. Henrik, happy birthday for Santos tomorrow, apparently. So my niece telling me. Acceptance and letting go is everything, says Paul. Indeed, indeed. Try not to resist. It's a beast that we can't fucking kill it. <clears throat> <laughs> Not that way, anyway. Free, life is for real, spinning pyramid, and Laura. Meet Buster online. Druids known as Tree Man. Okay. Them Druids, I'm from Wales and Alan. Like I met I met the like the boss of the Druids. He was a total toss pot. I don't know what they what they're exactly up to, all of them. They got a weird thing going on. I ain't fucking I ain't entertaining any of that. Or any of them. Joel, it's like we have the sacred knowledge, you know. It's like it's been handed down to us. Roman Bear, Roman Bear, good to see you. Okay, I'll link that stuff up, guys. I'm going to get Earth. Sweet dreams, nostalgic heat, as we say in Wales. Have a very good night. Rest well and enjoy the rest of your weekend, okay, guys? Make sure to comment if you have anything to comment about. Okay, much love. Wiggly, squiggly, flat thumbs to infinity fries. Mm -hmm. <laughs>